dodge bullets, baby. Ah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. Stands alone. Helmut wins the championship. Johnny Champ has done it. It's time. Dewey wins the tournament. Jerry Yang is world champion. It's time. Jamie Gold has done it. It's time. That is our new world champion. We're back, baby. Strap yourself into your seat. The main event. The main event. This is the main event. Yes! The main event is here. Just 6,844 players from around the globe have come to fight it out for poker's most cherished prize. It's the tournament of all tournaments. That's got to be the greatest. Ooh, baby. It's about being the best poker player in the world. Bring them all. To the victor goes immortality and over $9 million. Show me the money! The money is beautiful. If you're a poker player, you have to experience the main event. I want to gamble with you. There's no describing it. The wait is over. Yeah, come on, baby! The title of world champion is up for grabs. This is all mine this year. All mine. This is the main event. Oh, my God! It's my turn. It's my chance. No! It's my time. Welcome to the main event of the World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Hello, everyone. With Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. It is indeed time for poker's greatest event of the year, and the masses have once again descended upon the Rio, making this main event the second largest field ever, 6,844 players. $10,000 in a dream. They come from all over the world, seeking poker's top prize. This is it. This is it. From the colorful characters. We're at the 2008 World Series of Poker. This is the greatest thrill in the world. To the top pros. That's the winning signature. Local Las Vegas poker legends are out in force looking to cash in on the $64 million prize pool. I'm going to give you hell all night. However, if there's one man who embodies both Las Vegas and legendary status, it's Mr. Las Vegas himself, Wayne Newton, here with all the pageantry befitting the opening of the main event. Are you ready? Okay, shut up! Dr. Shane, Mr. Newton, the main event has begun. The race for over $9 million, and the world championship title is on. And Norman Poker's version of Mr. Las Vegas is at our featured table, Scotty Wynn. He just became horse world champion, but Scotty may not be Mr. Las Vegas anymore after some questionable behavior at the table. I want you guys to remember one, one, one thing after this event. If you guys see the lame Lamborghini sit out there with a license plate, say, like, T-Y-P-M. You know what I mean? Thank you, players' money. <laughs> you gotta remember that. All right, action now underway here in the Rio Poker Room. The blinds will start out at 50 and 100. And there is 25-year-old Mike Abbott from San Diego. And on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, he looks at Queen Jack offsuit. Lon, we're about to see our first hand in the main event, and I am stoked! A race at 250. Let's see if we can get you that Lamborghini here. <laughs> He's going to get chips into the pot right away. Everyone does start with 20,000 chips. It's a $10,000 buy-in here in the main Just event. Just for money, and he tried to give it already. Scotty with Ace King. Scotty won nearly $2 million in the horse championship, but he was repeatedly abusive and profane at the table. He'll go heads up with Abbott. Scotty in the big blind. The flop is King 6-7. Scotty pairs his King. That flop missed Abbott. Scotty checks. Abbott now reaching for chips. He thinks he can push Scotty around. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Oh, it looks as if he is going to try to give his money to Scotty. We all fine here, baby. Scotty makes the call. Thank you. Scotty with that big advantage. A pair of kings. It's a deuce on the turn. Scotty went earns the check mark. You know, I noticed this on day one of the main event the last few years. People keep missing no. the board, and they just keep betting. They both check it. Maybe a Toyota, not a Lamborghini on this one. <laughs> Abbott slows down. I like Lamborghini. River I card is a five. Scotty already has a check mark, and he'll bet 500. No! And a fold from Abbott. See, baby? Just only you. Look at that. Look at that. 
I don't want to raise you, baby. <laughs> a little different from the last time we saw him, Scotty, in good spirits today. He just wanted to buy me a Toyota. <laughs> Scotty's shopping for cars right now, but perhaps more importantly, trying to buy back some love on poker's biggest stage. Norman, the one event we look forward to most every year is finally here. And as we have come to learn, the only thing predictable about the main event is its unpredictability. And no player is more unpredictable than Scotty Wynn. Lon, since he won the big one in 1998, we've seen Scotty at his princely best and Scotty at his prickly worst. Of late, there was his main event meltdown last year and his unprofessional behavior while winning horse this year. So which Scotty will we see? Here's hoping he makes a deep and gracious run at the main event title. No doubt Scotty has some making up to do with a lot of his fans. And you mentioned gracious, Norman. Well, Jerry Yang is here. Man, I just want to wish everybody luck, okay? What's uh, up, Jerry? Thank you very much. Hey, congratulations to you. Thank you, baby. That, that, that was a big win. Thank you, baby. Jerry's right. Thank Despite you, Scotty's poor Thank behavior, it was an impressive win. Jerry will defend his title on another one of the four day ones here in the main event. You gotta be the nicest poker player. <laughs> well, Norman, I guess nice guys don't always finish last. We head out past the Milwaukee's Best Light No Limit Lounge to the vast outer tables here at the Rio Poker Room, and we find the man that Jerry Yang beat heads up to win the main event title. Tuan Lamb getting active early here. Hey, look, Tuan's finally playing a pot. Guess you can't sit around and wait for 6,000 people to bust two years in a row. <laughs> the 2007 runner-up off to a good start so far here in 2008. And Gavin Smith, he's come close to a bracelet but never won one. Right now he's in a hand with Roland DeWolf. You know, race every time I was... It's just a hunch, but I don't think those two guys hang out at the same public library. Roland let me down. He was my pick last year, but he forces a fold from Gavin here. Does it look like I play cards that good? Actually, I think Gavin's the one who needs a massage right now. Yeah, Gavin is not loving life right now. What I miss? To another table, and there's someone everybody seems to know. You just knew it was going to be somebody. <laughs> you just knew it was going to be somebody. Yeah. It's Mr. Romano to you, sir. This table excited to have a celebrity in their midst, and that's the main event. You can sit next to your butcher or a famous TV star. Where's Jason Alexander? I got a side bet with him. Yeah, they have a thousand dollar last longer bet. He's the only one. He's got more hair. <laughs> Well, it looks like Jason's doing okay on that side bet right now. He's got Surreal Chabot all in. Jason with a set of nines to Chabot's pocket tens. Chabot needs a 10 or an 8 for a straight. And now the river card. It is an ace, and that will be it for Chabot. Knocked out by Jason Alexander. You get knocked out by Costanza, you are a loser. <laughs> George is getting pumped. A little more adrenaline than I care to have. I see it up in blue, 36. Jason Alexander out of the blocks like a rocket. All right, let's check in on table two where we find bracelet winner Karan O'Leary. You don't have to win every hand you're dealt. You just need to win the majority of the hands you play. Ah, uh, the Irish, anything they say sounds profound. It's an easy old game, really, isn't it? You know, two words were never yeah, spoken. O'Leary is joined at this table by another top pro in Billy Gazes, who has straight and flush draws against Danny Hample. Hample has top two pair. He's checked, and the action is on Gazes. Billy Gazes has 29 World Series caches and no bracelet. Only Tony Cousineau with 34 caches has more without a bracelet. Gazes bets 375, and the San Diego contractor, Hample. That's not kitchen table poker. Makes a raise at 1375. Do you want action? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. <laughs> Billy will call for a thousand more. Yeah, Billy took that as a yes. Turn card now. Hample still best with top two pair. And he will bet at this time 2,000. And Billy will continue to chase the flush or the straight. Wishful thinking on that call, perhaps, but he hits his flush with a five of hearts on the river. See how the pros chase down that flush draw on? Billy's got good speed. <laughs> Hample checks it this time. 3,000. Billy bets it. Call. And a quick call from Hample. And he'll see that his two pair come up short. I saying, you lucky dog. <laughs> yeah, Billy chased and chased and caught. What percentage of the pot was that? If I, if I can say the percentage, I'm going to be labeled a math guy. Yeah, yeah you don't want that. I don't want to be a math guy. I want to be a field guy. Who Back considers five? Billy a math guy? He can't count to 10. That's a field guy. Field. field. <laughs> well, no matter who's what, this has been a good start to Billy Gates' main event. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's 
best light, brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at worldseriesofpoker.com. With the main event field this big, odds are you're going to see a full spectrum of personalities. <laughs> unique styles. Just tune in. And crazy characters. <laughs> For some, how you look is nearly as important as how you play. Entering the main event's a lot like buying a lotto ticket right down to the random draw of your seat. You never know with whom you'll be sharing a table. I have Dan Harrington. Action Dan doesn't look like he's about to win the lotto. I have no idea who that is, but he looks like Merlin. I'm the WSOP wizard. Oh. <laughs> Not quite. That is Blake Cahale, though. He's a good friend of Blair Hinkle's. They each had a prop bet on who would win a bracelet first. Blair did win his. Blake is dressed as a wizard. Blair and his brother Grant, the first siblings to win bracelets in the same year. They're like the James boys, Frank and Jesse, only more dangerous. And we find another duo. It's bracelet winner Katja Theter and her husband Jan Christoph von Halle, both from Germany. They're sharing some secrets now. I speak German, and I can tell you they're plotting to invade Del Boca Vista Phase 3. <laughs> Over to another poker-playing couple. There's Bob Feduniak playing in his 30th World Series. He's married to Maureen Feduniak, who has cashed eight times at the World Series. She's currently in a hand with Devilfish Uliot. Devilfish folds. You gotta show me how we're going to war. Show me. I guess they're going to war. He's going to have to get his hair cut. Go get him, Maureen. Maureen hoping for her first cash in the main event. All right, on our E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, you see the chip colors and their denominations. Everyone begins the main event with 20,000 chips. All but one will end up with zero. Back to Scotty at our feature table. Congrats on the horse, man. That's awesome. Dang it, yeah, man. congratulations. What's your best game in the horse, you think? I win most of my, my chip on uh, Omaha High Low and Hodem. Oh, nice. Scotty beat Michael D. McKelly heads up for his fifth bracelet. Raz is my worst. Raz. <laughs> well, the only thing worse than Scotty's Raz game may have been his behavior en route to that horse title. You think it out with me? You know, baby, when I lost a couple part, I act like I'm mad. You must be sick. Angry. Just you. I act like I going crazy, you know, da 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 da. You never see me? Yeah, yeah. Thought you were an ambassador of poker. I'm disappointing you, Scotty. <laughs> I cannot be nice all the time and get run over by the player. Just play a game. And I'm not gonna put up for no, no one. Who give a what you thinking, man? You know, I hold it in because of fans. I try to give it all. I make sure everybody enjoy when they see Scotty. That's right, baby. So? What's the big deal if I, I let it out sometime? Enough is enough, man. You know, but I was on top of the game at all times, that a whole time. I mean, like when the host event just proved to be bold. I'm the best that is, baby. I don't accept Scotty's explanation for his behavior, and even though he just won one of the most prestigious titles, I think a lot of people lost respect for him in the process. Had a bit of a tough 148, huh? Yeah. 148 player, 147 sucker. <laughs> just kidding, guy. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. As the action continues here at the feature table, the blinds are 100-200. Yosef Ulaki, a house painter from Naples, Florida, ace 10 of spades. A house painter? Yeah. I think he likes playing poker just because it gives him a chance to sit down. <laughs> ace 10 of spades raised to 800. Action on Scotty Wynn with pocket deuces. Scotty hoping this main event doesn't end as abruptly as last year's did. That was an infamous crash and burn. He finished 11th. He makes the call with pocket deuces. Over to Michael Abbott. Abbott with pocket sixes in the small blind. He's a poker pro now, but Abbott used to work on political campaigns. There's no upside there. <laughs> he makes the call. The big blind folds, so three players will see the flop. The flop is deuce, tray, jack, all hearts. A set for Scotty, a flush draw for Abbott. Yeah, with that one flop, Scotty goes from a big dog to a big favorite. Checked over to Scotty, and he will bet 700 with a set. Abbott folds his pair of sixes and a flush draw. Ulaki now. Ulaki will make the call. Jeez, the, the flush draw folds and the no draw calls. It's a queen of spades on the turn. Ulaki now picks up a straight draw, but Scotty still leads. 
checked by Ulaki. Scotty way ahead in this hand. Scotty makes it 1600 now. Okay, call. Call. And Ulaki will make the call. Boy, I've got to get into a home game with house painters. <laughs> River card is a four of spades, and Scotty will earn the check mark with his set. If I were Ulaki, I might push all in there because, you know, that's what people do at the main event on day one with Squad Douche. <laughs> he does check it. Scotty bets. 38.75. Well, since he didn't push all in, Ulaki can now get away from his hand. And he does indeed fold quickly. No more blood, baby. It was donation for that Ferrari. It's a Ferrari now? Living in the fast lane is all Scotty Wynn knows. So far, so good for the horse world champion here in the main event. Next Tuesday, the main event journey begins for a new cast of characters. And on November 11th, the highly anticipated final table. The November 9 will compete for the most coveted prize in poker. Every Tuesday night at 8 and 9 p.m., it's the World Series of Poker on ESPN. 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Back inside the Rio. I'm getting tired. You guys need on me, so I'm, I'm not going to play no, no more. And there's the Scotty we've always known, taking some time out for the fans. And signing some autographs in the process. To an outer table, Ray Romano is in a hand with and pondering a bet from Joseph Picard, but Ray is taking his sweet time. The clock has been called. You know, in comedy clubs, they flash a red light to let the comedian know when his time is up on stage. If they flashed a red light right now, Ray would make up his mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Take your time. Five, four. Clock counting three, down. Two. I go all in. Ray pushes. That's enough to put Bakar all in. Okay, a classless fold from Bakar, who's upset Ray took so much time. Bakar showed a pair of kings. Ray turns over a set of queens. No, no, I, I, I was not acting. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, I believe him. He's not that good of an actor. <laughs> No, did anybody think he might have had pocket kings? Nobody thought that? Yeah, yeah, aces. I know it was aces or ace kings. Yeah, aces. Yeah, yeah, aces. If I was bluffing, that would have been the, the Academy Award. Then, yes. Right? That'd be great. Yeah, yes. but it's, it's, that, you know what that was? Most definitely. That was me not knowing. <laughs> so Ray's still good with his last longer bet with Jason Alexander. Well, Jason now has put all his chips in the middle. He's got a straight against a top two pair of Brian Collin. Collin trying to figure out yet another Hollywood type. You're here at a critical moment. Jason putting the ultimate pressure on Collin. Get seven, eight. That would be a pretty good read. That's what I'd be representing. <laughs> if I told you I have everything else beat besides seven, eight. I'm committed. I'm in. What are you telling me now? Tell me before. <clears throat> well, that little cough is a tell. Actors always cough when they're acting. Pacino taught me that. <laughs> Johnny Pacino? <laughs> I'll show you either way. The old Jamie Gold line. Colin folds. 7-8 it is. And Jason will take that pot. He tried to use his acting skills on Brian Collin to get a call, but it didn't work that time. But as Jason will tell you, his Hollywood brethren are no fakers when it comes to their love of poker. You know, poker is a game that is best played by people that have a high IQ and intellect. You know, that's most of Hollywood. Hey! Yes! Actually, there are guys in Hollywood who are considerable players. Um, Toby McGuire, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon. So we're all hubristic enough to believe that we know how to play it. Yeah! You hate the tables that are going... Nobody's having a good time. I tend to feel out the table. More often than not, somebody goes, hey, you know, how's Jerry? You know, that kind of opens it up. <laughs> George lives on felt. George would take a bad beat and go, yeah, I was, I, I was stupid. I, you know. I shouldn't have been in it. I shouldn't have even been in it. I don't know what I was thinking. I shouldn't even be able to say the word heart. You know, I'm not in this to become the greatest poker player in the world. You must bear in mind at all times, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I, I just keep it fun. More or less, I'm one of the guys. I just have a hell of a lot more money than they do, and, and I'm an internationally beloved superstar. Other than that, there's no difference between me and the other guys. The Hollywood crowd has become a staple here at the main event, and the footage you saw in the feature was taken during the Andy Up for Africa tournament here at the Rio. In its second year now, it's raised over a million dollars for the Darfur region. 
Over table two, Billy Gazes has two pair versus Scott Quickburner, who has absolutely nothing. Billy's bet 200. Action is on Quickburner. Oh, I'll be calling him Mr. Q. <laughs> I, I just haven't played a hand with you all day. Well, you might as well. This could be the wrong time. I know. It could be the right time. I just want to play with you. <laughs> He'll call. That's the worst call. <laughs> I just want to play. That with was you. the worst call I've ever seen. <laughs> Queen on the turn. A gut shot straight draw now for Quickburner. I check to you. Billy still leads. That's a good check after a bad call. I made the worst call on the flop. The worst call I've ever seen. That didn't help. It didn't. Are you retelling the truth? He is. <laughs> he made the worst call on the flop, and it didn't help him. 350. 350. You didn't do the McCain either. Oh, the, the tell? He didn't do yeah. the L when he's bluffing? Yeah. I'm an Obama guy. Don't even try to Another call. I have now seen the two worst calls in poker history, unless Mr. Q has a surprise for us on the river. Gazes with a check mark. Mr. Q should now bet, and Bill Gazes will run off into the desert, and the worst calls will look brilliant. That was a bad card for me. Mr. Q checked. Was it? Yeah, it was. No, that was a bad card for Mr. Q because he never should have seen it. Check. Billy checks. And Billy will win the hand against King 8. Gazes can't believe his eyes. King 8 may have a new name. <laughs> yeah, it's called Mr. Q's worst call in history on the flop. <laughs> oh, boy. Billy's got to love this table. People are just throwing chips his way. All right, back over to our featured table where Scotty Wynn is front and center. And what an impressive double he's pulled off. He won the 98 main event and, of course, now is the horse world champion. You didn't want to take a holiday after winning the horse event? This is holiday, baby. Come on, man. <laughs> how, you know, how can I miss this, baby? Yeah, miss this. No. All right, Scotty Wynn. Oh, life's good. Pocket aces. Well, it feels like a holiday when you're dealt pocket aces. And Scotty is going to raise it to 900. Why are these guys dragging? It's the main event. I'm sure they're excited, but it's a long haul, Norman. Over to Yosef Ulaki, king queen offsuit. Call. Ulaki makes the call. I would rather paint five houses in one day than play king queen against pocket aces. The flop is for queen seven. Ulaki thinks he likes that flop. But his queens are up against Scotty's aces. Yeah, that queen is just going to get Ulaki in trouble. Scotty makes it 1,500. Ulaki with top pair and a strong kicker. And he makes the call. Scotty can start thinking about that Lamborghini again. Turn card now. Ten of hearts. No help for Ulaki. Scotty makes it 3,000. Ulaki immediately reaching for chips and makes the call. Maybe a Lamborghini with a sunroof and HDTV. <laughs> River card now. Is an eight of diamonds. Scotty Wynn with the check mark. Vroom, vroom. Pretty harmless looking board. He bets 4,000. Scotty puts in a value bet, sensing he can squeeze another 4,000 out of the Ulaki. Ulaki says, why not? Hi, Cole. Beep, beep. He makes the call and will lose that pot to Scotty, who played the pocket aces to perfection, got paid off on every street, rakes in a big pot, and that's the planter's good instinct moment. Scotty blowing kisses. Oh, he got me on the cheek. Yeah, he's picking up more chips, and Scotty blowing through this day one like the world champion that he is. The planter's good instinct moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. Welcome back to the Rio and the main event of the World Series of Poker at our feature table. Scotty Wynn still faring well. He's joined now, though, by another pro, David Chino Ream, and he's bringing a lot of chips here. Chino Ream has made two World Series final tables, including the mixed Hold'em event earlier this year. I learned from the best. I can't go That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah, I can't. You learn from the best, then you can play all right. That's right. That's right. Right, Scotty? That's right, baby. I have to apologize to Chino. I criticized his play in his mixed hold'em elimination hand, but we thought it was the no limit round and they were actually playing yeah, limit hold'em. You get everybody a drink, all right, baby? <laughs> Scotty's buying eight, 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 drinks one. for the house. Right. A nice gesture from Scotty, but let's hope he's not drinking with him. Well, Scotty, one of the few players who always seems to have the home crowd and buying <laughs> drinks for the whole house here is not gonna hurt his chances. And Chino, let me just say it again. I am sorry about the fallop. I am as stupid as I look. All right, baby. <laughs> You gotta, you, you gotta remember, one of this player raised my blind and whoever related to them cut their drink. 
<laughs> oh, he's laying ground rolls. It looks like the Prince of Poker may be back, and the crowd loves it. All right, action on Chino Reem with Ace King of Clubs. That's a raising hand. What if I don't drink, baby? Around Scotty, everybody starts saying baby. Chino Cut makes him it 900. Cut, Cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lightweight. <laughs> 900 to go. Action folds around to Scotty Win in a big blind. You good, baby. You good. Five tray into the muck. Scotty folds. Chino Reem will take that small pot. And the crowd playfully has turned against Chino Reem. Yes, yeah, some heckling from the peanut gallery. Scare, baby, scare. Damn, Scotty, I gotta just fold Ace King sooner when it's your blind, buddy. I don't want the whole crowd against me. That's right, baby. <laughs> well, Chino may have the bigger stack, but Scotty is still the prince of the table. He's also part of an elite group of players who've won the main event. Each champion looms larger than life with their picture adorning the upper reaches of the Rio Poker Room. That includes this man, Dan Harrington, the 95 world champ. His Harrington on Hold'em books have become one of the standards in poker instruction. Dan won't play that hand, but another former champ in the house is involved in a big hand. 78 champ Bobby Baldwin has Scott Mutt Montgomery all in. Baldwin's Kings have Scott in bad shape. Now the flop, and Montgomery pairs his ace to take a big lead. Turn card now is a third jack. Montgomery can only be knocked out by the case king. River card is a four, and Montgomery does survive and double up through Bobby Baldwin. Baldwin down to 5,600 chips. And Montgomery scoops in the champ's chips. Baldwin, 27 years old when he won the main event. He's a four-time bracelet winner. Elsewhere in the room, let's catch up with Bob Fiduniak. He and his wife, Maureen, play in the main event every year. Bob's been treading the poker waters today, still with about the 20,000 he started with. The only time he cashed was in 2006. He finished 590. What was the best record in the family? The highest I ever actually finished, and it was 28. Uh -huh. But that was... Uh, that was 20 years ago, and they guy, paid 27. Right. So Bob Fiduniak still hanging in there at another table nearby. His wife, Maureen, faring slightly better. She just flopped the nuts, and we'll take down a nice pot. That's how she does it. Nice work. Maureen flops a queen high straight. Raising on the bottom of jack nine and flopping the stone. Maureen rarely gets her money in bad, even though in 2003 we mistakenly called both her and her husband, Bob, the two dirtiest words in poker, dead money. Maureen Fiduniak is a veteran of the World Series and a Las Vegas resident who defines dead money. Yes, we remember. We were not happy. <laughs> but at least she lasted longer than her husband, Bob. A number of people told us times. about it and said you probably don't want to bother watching it. <laughs> In the aftermath of it, it made us feel kind of good because so many people came up to us and told us that they thought dead money was dead wrong. We are not doing this as a profession. We're not doing it to make money, but of course we like to win. Good luck. Thank you, dear. <laughs> it's sort of like two for the price of one, because if one of us gets knocked out of the tournament, then the other one is still there, and you're excited for them, whoever is left. If anybody asked me who, won, who I wanted to win the World Series of Poker this year, I would say Bob. And I would say Maureen. Of course, I'm much versa. happier if we both do well. Yeah. It would be better if we could be co-champions. Me calling somebody else dead money? That's rich. I must apologize again. Bob and Maureen, I am so sorry. Let's pick up the action at table two. Billy Gazes has top two pair. He's in a hand with Karan O'Leary, who paired his 10. Andrew Ferguson with nothing. Check the river, but they're all crushed by Tony Rosert, who flopped quad deuces. Action on Billy Gazes. This hand was checked on the flop and on the turn. Unfortunately for Gazes, he's made aces up. And he bets 500. Action on Rosert now, and he's going to make it 1,500 with four twos. By the way, since this is a day of apologies, let me just give a blanket I'm sorry to all of my ex-wives. <laughs> Geron O'Leary now with a pair of tens. He wants to play, but he'll fold, as does Ferguson. Now Gazes needs a 1,000 to call, and he does make that call. Aces up versus Rosert's wow. four deuces. I was done with it. Then why'd you call, Billy? I knew I was beat, too. Nice hand. I ought to give you a piece of my mind. Easy, boy. We don't want to make any more apologies. Rosert will take the pot. I did tasty pair there, too, mate, but I just didn't have a good feeling at all. It was just something wasn't right. Karan was a bit suspicious. Woo. 
And while O'Leary pats himself on the back for folding that hand, Billy Gazes is left kicking himself. Here's tonight's Poker Fact, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. If you start with a pocket pair, the odds of making four of a kind are 407 to 1. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Back at the Rio Carano, Larry thanking his lucky charms. Except for our father, three Hail Marys. True salt over both shoulders this morning. That's worked so far. Everyone in this room hoping to earn a spot at the main event final table, which will air November 11th. Okay, three aces. At three. another table, top pro Chao Zhang. What scares me, I didn't used to understand a word Chao Zhang says. Now I understand everything he says. <laughs> All in and called. He has just called Douglas Farmer, who's at risk. And with that river card, Chao Zhang will win the pot and knock off Farmer. It's only 20,000 here. <laughs> the three-time bracelet winner is a delight. At another table, Jason Alexander is all in with aces, but way behind Brian Collins' wheel, one card to come. The river card comes up short, and Jason Alexander is gone. What, you thought Costanza was going to win the main event? <laughs> so Jason Alexander loses his last longer bet to Ray Romano. All right, boys, be good. So Jason will take his lead. Meanwhile, back at the featured table, the drinks have been served, courtesy yeah, of Scotty that, Wynn. That, that's more like it, baby. Let's play some poker, damn it. Scotty, the 1998 main event champion, 2008 horse champion. All he needs is player of the year honors to complete the World Series Triple Crown. Scotty looks down at Queen Nine of Spades, calls the big blind of 400. There's Jess Yowitz, a St. Louis investment manager. He has pocket jacks. Poker author John Vorhaus says there are three ways to play pocket jacks. All wrong. <laughs> and Yowitz uh, wrongly raises to 1,625. <laughs> Action folds around to Chino Reem. Chino in the big blind. King, queen of clubs. You got it, baby. He calls. You got it, baby. Scotty calls. <laughs> Yowitz surrounded by poker sharks. Gold store oh. attendants. I like the names, too. Three players to the flop. It is 5 oh, seven, 5 deuce. Seven. That missed all three. The Jacks hold up for Yowitz. Chino checks. Scotty. He's going to be aggressive. He's got a pretty good stack working right now. 2,500. Scotty indeed gets feisty, hoping his aggression pays off. Yowitz, though, has the cards. And he raises 65. Yeah, I was playing pocket jacks pretty good right now. Chino folded. Chino folded. Be too nice, huh, baby? <laughs> and Scotty gives it up. And Yawitz will take the pot. Oh, man, never give the pros extra information. They'll use it against you and your family. Yeah. Yawitz found a fourth way to play jacks. Good hand, baby. <laughs> I know you wouldn't do something crazy. <laughs> Well, Jason Alexander's on the move. I guess he's looking for Ray Romano to pay off that last longer bet. And there is Ray, unaware he's $1,000 richer. Like he needs it. <laughs> Jason goes right by him. Welcher. <laughs> 49, right? Oh, I'm sorry. He's, he's lost. Where is he? Oh, Ray will find him. I guarantee that. What happened? Hey, what happened? I hate you. I just lost my pocket aces. <laughs> Sorry to hear it. You Seriously? just won a thousand dollars, my pocket friend. Pocket aces? Seriously? Pocket aces. I just wish I could get this smile off my face. I know. <laughs> I guess I'm buying dinner tonight. You're buying yeah. dinner tonight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you're All flying right. me back home. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Are you, are you sticking around now? Yeah, I'll meet you at dinner. You made a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. <laughs> and his show wasn't that good. It was good, yeah. but Leave It to Beaver was better. So Ray Romano continues his role as main event poker player. Jason Alexander, though, must console himself with just being the internationally beloved superstar that he is. Yeah! For six years running, an amateur has won the main event. They're just outnumbered. Less pros than there are amateurs. Will this be the year a pro finally breaks through? The pro can and will win the main event. I think there's a little chip on our shoulders now. We're actually rooting for a top poker player to win the main event this year. 
As you see on the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker in the six years preceding Robert Varconi's win, the top pros dominated the main event. In 2001, the last year pro won, Dewey Tomko finished second, Phil Helmuth was fifth, and Mike Mattiso was sixth. One pro who knows what it takes to go deep is Josh Arie. He finished third in 2004. Oh, this is brutal. Contemplating a call for the rest of his chips. All my money. I gotta wait a whole other year to play with you people again. I don't know if he was gonna call them people. Arie does make the call. Jacks. His opponent shows a pair of jacks, and Arie is gone. And he will indeed have to wait another year. And so too will Maureen Fiduniak. Oh, She's not kidding. She's dead money. I'm back, baby. I'd like to apologize for my comment I made five seconds ago, but I got a feeling Bob will be on the rail soon enough. Wish it had been me instead of her. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry again. All right, to Ray Romano, whose table was broken. He has been moved elsewhere. Party's over. <laughs> you play poker? Not well. Very well. Not, not that good. <laughs> well, 27-year-old poker pro Justin right. Phillips and the rest of the table, happy to have Ray here. And despite what Ray says, he does have some chips to work with. As it gets later here at the Rio, just surviving day one of the main event becomes the number one goal for many players. Last round, baby, drink up. You know, if I were Scotty, seriously, I would not want to return to the scene of the crime with a bottle of beer in my hand. Good point. In the hat on the left there is Tracy Scala from Ocean Ridge, Florida. He's got six five of hearts. He will limp in for 400. 6,844 players. Only the Jamie Goldie year 2006 had a bigger field than this one. Action over to Scotty Wynn. Scotty in the small blind with ace queen offsuit. And he will raise the action to 1600. Scotty tramps all over. Scala's limp into the pot. Big blind folds. 12, baby, 12. Scala needs 1200 to call, and he does. Scala contributes to the Scotty Wynn automobile fund. <laughs> Heads up to the flop now. It is deuce six tray. Scala with a pair of sixes and a straight flush draw. And Scotty might want to look at some economy cars. He's hurting with that flop. Ace high, but he will test the resolve of Scala. Makes it 2,500 to stick around. Well, again, we see Scotty being aggressive. Again, figuring the flop has missed his opponent. Scala raises, though, to 7,500. Scala tells him, no, I got it, buddy. All right, no more beer for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Scotty folds. No more. Is that the bluff of the century? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. Scotty did say it was last call for the fans at the featured table, but for Bob Feduniak, well, it might be last call as well as he has moved all in. See, I told you. He has pocket nines against pocket tens. Doesn't seem too upset about his desperate situation. Yeah, Bob takes it well. He'll need a nine on the river. The river is a face card that misses Bob Feduniak, and he has been eliminated from the main event. The Feduniak's about as classy a couple as you'll find around the felt, even ships his chips over. So neither Feduniak able to make it past day one of the main event. Hi, sweetheart. It just ended. I have pocket nines against pocket tens. That's how most of my marriages end. He'll be home for dinner. Okay, well, we'll commiserate. <laughs> See you soon. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, brewed for a man's taste, Miller Brewing Company, and in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at worldseriesofpoker.com. Back to the Rio in the ever-shrinking field of the opening round of day one. 2075. Oh, Gavin Smith trying to make his small end sound as intimidating as possible. Gavin with flush and straight draws, but he trails the pair of sevens held by Doug Cardoza. Gavin Smith, like Billy Gazes, no bracelets. Turn card now is a jack, no help to Gavin, and the river card will eliminate Gavin Smith. Hey, Gavin, you should head over to the feature table for free beer. Get your 10 grand's worth. Elsewhere, Ray Romano has settled into his new table. He's concentrating on the poker, but he's not in the hand. In fact, there is a big hand developing between Justin Phillips and Motoyuki Mabuchi. Mabuchi made a bet after the river onto that scary board. Phillips now fires back with a raise. Has Justin Phillips bet the shirt off his back? <laughs> Action on Mabuchi. 
Gimble. He's all in. Michael. Oh. Phillips turns over a royal flush. Royal flush. Mabuchi, quad aces. Wow. You gotta be kidding me. Quad aces, your last hand of the main event. What a way to hit the rail. There's nothing more ultimate than that. Oh, no. That is a statistical improbability, my friends. <laughs> what a horrible river card for you. <laughs> if you flop a set of aces, river quads, and lose, that's a bad beat. And Mabuchi does stumble out of the main event. Take a picture of that one, dude. Oh, that's good. That is just... Don't take it, don't take it. If this happened to Phil Helmuth, the table would no longer be here. <laughs> Coming down the table, sit down, boom. Four aces, royal flush. How many times are you going to see that? Uh, the chances of a royal flush and quads happening in the same hand, one and 2.7 billion. I like you. Yeah, you got to give some love to the dealer. <laughs> I get, that a, little, is I get sick. a little credit too, right? Yeah, you and the came here and I know what happened. You're the man. I love Raymer. He loves Greg Raymer? Everybody watch that show! <laughs> Greg Raymer has his own TV show? <laughs> wow, you got a famous TV star at your table, beat quad aces with a royal flush? Welcome to the main event. And there's what they all came to play for. More than 600 players have already been eliminated. The chip average right now about 37,000. Back to our feature table, Scotty Wynn, a little under average right now. All uh, right, what is you guy want me to do? All in? Uh, you guy want me to go all in? Later, I bet I promise you. You know, I think it violates the one player per hand rule when you ask 27 people in the crowd who you've bought drinks for what you should do. On the Milwaukee's best light pocket cam, Chino Ream folds 10 deuce. Action folds again around to Scotty Wynn. Jack, nine of clubs. Scotty in a good mood, playing to the crowd. He just missed the main event final table last year. He's going to raise it to 1,100. And the big blind, 22-year-old poker pro, Anna Robleski. Nine, five of spades. And she's got powerful poker friends. She's been schooled by Barry Greenstein and Ted Forrest. She makes the call. She'll go heads up against Scotty Wynn. The flop is Jack, ace, king. A pair of jacks for Scotty. He's got a huge lead. Robleski, first to act. She checks it. Scotty checks as well. Scotty doesn't like it. Queen on the turn. Yet another scare card out there. Robleski, first to act. And now she's going to bet it. 1,300. Well, you see the percentages, but Anna seizes control of the pot by betting at it. And Scotty will fold. Scotty gives up the best hand. And Anna's got some backers here. I got fans. Oh. Well, some of Scotty's fans might be switching allegiance. I have the best steering section. You guys are good. Smoke clear, baby. Who's going to go to the bank? <laughs> now it don't matter, baby. You know, I think Scotty ends every sentence with baby, so we forget. We had no idea what he said before that. <laughs> All right, let's go over to table two. Billy gazes, watches on as Kiran O'Leary is in a hand. He's got pocket eights against Billy's old nemesis, Scott Quickburner, who's got a six of diamonds. There's my buddy, Mr. Q, the man with the worst call. No shame in folding. Has he seen Quickburner play? It'd be funner calling, though. It'd be even funner raising you. That's always an option, too. Maybe he can make the worst raise ever. <laughs> yeah, let's go on. There you go. <laughs> wow. Day one of the main event line, blinds are still low, and Mr. Q pushes all in with nearly 18,000 chips left. Wow. You know, against damn near every other player at the table here, I'd have folded this hand, but... Billy thinks Mr. Q has king eight. Th this is what the pros have to face here at the main event. Wild, unpredictable aggression from unknowns. O'Leary makes the call, though. Oh, well, this is for most of O'Leary's stack. Yeah, good call, man. O'Leary likes his pocket pair, but he's not home free. He also likes to wander during a big hand, and there he goes. Oh, come on, my man. You pushed all in with a weak ace. That being said, I wouldn't have called it. I would have played it safe. Flop now. 7-5. Queen Quickburner still trails, but he's got a flush draw. Is it over? It will be over soon for oh, somebody. Killing me. Get it over with. 
Turn card is another queen. O'Leary still leads. Mr. Q needs an ace or any diamond other than an eight to stay alive. River cards, a ten of hearts, and Scott Quickburner is gone. They win? I won? Oh. Thank you, Lord. But it's about, baby. Think about the hand running through your head. It just didn't make any sense. Hey, mate, God bless, mate. I thought I could get eights out of there, you know? I no, thought maybe a couple of those, eh? No, not the way the hand played. Okay. The hand played out, you know, if you thought about the way the hand played What do you want from my guy? Today he made the worst call in the flop in history and goes out with a dicey all-in. Nice hand, Kieran. I guess you're Never easy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, I've another... How many months till November? 100. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Andrea Pive. He's a World Series rookie. <laughs> <laughs> How much money do we spend on these pocket cams? And that's what we get. <laughs> Pive with mystery cards raises the 300. Over to Lindgren, four deuce of spades. See, a pro knows how to use the pocket cam. And a pro wants to play some babysuited connectors. Eric, we'll call for 300. Over to Michelle Abacassis, Paris born, London resident, Jack Nine of Diamonds. From the small blind, calls for 250. And the big blind is Tulane student Julian Mir with King Deuce of Hearts. And he will call. We've got an Italian, a Frenchman, and two Americans in the hand. I've got Pivet in the lead, and I'll give you the field line. The flop is five, queen, nine. Abacassis with a pair of nines, and he checks it. Sure. Yeah. I think Pivet has ace, queen, so he's got a pair of queens. Why didn't he bet? We can't show you any percentages because we don't know Pivet's cards. Everyone checks. Turn card is a queen. Huh, Pivet's got trip queens now. <laughs> Abacassis with a pair of nines bets 500. He's going to regret that bet. Mir with King High gets out of the way. Now Pave. Ah, he folds. Possibly didn't have trip queens. Maybe not. He folded. Lindgren will stick around, though, with four spades to a flush. Well, with the implied odds here, that's not the worst call in the world. Five of clubs on the river. Apicacis gets the check mark with queens and nines. Lindgren now. Sensing some weakness. Bets 1,200. Eric's going to try and steal it. Geez, the French gave us the Statue of Liberty, and this is how we repay them? <laughs> Well, Michelle's got to think it's possible Eric flopped the bottom pair and has made a full house on the river. Epicacies calls. You win. And he does win. Oh, that's why Eric's never made it past day two of the main event. <laughs> Lindgren got a little frisky with his chips. And Lindgren with an early stumble here on day one. Yeah, Lindgren, the seasoned pro, tried to set the tone early and bluff Epicacies out of his chips, but Michelle was not going for it. What you writing down? American bluffs badly. My hands will the report that later. Sounds uh, like a lot of work. <laughs> I thought, I thought maybe it was the, Can time, be the time of your first pot win. Bad bluff. <laughs> You'll probably write that one down. Not the start the player of the year wanted, but with Eric here and Negrano at table two, we should be in for an entertaining evening. Norman, sometimes a friendly rivalry can bring out the best in both parties. Eric Lindgren and Daniel Negreanu are great friends. In fact, Lindgren was best man at Negreanu's wedding. So perhaps Daniel's frequent success at the World Series has inspired Lindgren to new heights in 2008. Well, Daniel's marriage is already over. I feel for you, buddy. So maybe Eric should have pushed him away from the altar. But in general, these two are good for each other and great for the game. And in a year in which they each won a bracelet and battled for Player of the Year honors, it would be terrific to see both make a run at this main event. After his third place in the horse event and a bracelet in hand, Eric would like to finish the World Series with a win here. All right, to the outer field where some past champions are in action. Every time you're standing here, Jerry, how much, how much do you charge? Uh, for you, it's all free. Defending okay. champ Jerry Yang's not playing today, but the 04 champ Greg Raymer is. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, don't bother the players, buddy. Who is this guy? <laughs> also here in the Rio Poker Room, 2006 champion Jamie Gold. It's in a hand right now with Eric Grossberger. 15. Jamie at the 06 main event won $12 million. Since then, he's cashing just two World Series events for a total of 14000 I promised you I'm winning this hand. <laughs> What's my hand? What's your hand? Ace-deuce. Right. Queen nine. Queen nine, yeah. Oh. No, I got it. I told you there's no way I was losing that hand. Yeah, no, I figured that. I, I won the 12 it. million with the queen nine. Right, I'm, I'm well, never, queen never nine. losing with that I hand. Will. Now I'm on a run. Jamie Gold in classic form. All right, back over to table two. Daniel Negrano still brimming with confidence after winning his fourth bracelet this year in a limit hold'em event. Action on Negrano. And he looks down at, oh, just like Jamie Gold. He's got queen nine. 200. 
to raise it up. Daniel finished 11th in the main event in 2001, his best finish here. Action on Andy Pata, Philippine-born, lives in Tenafly, New Jersey. He's in the mortgage business. He's got a nine of hearts, we know, and a ten of hearts. Pata asked Daniel for his autograph just before the day began. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the idea. He's in the big blind, he makes the call for 100. If I got it, you're going to just bet it 500. I'm sorry. I got it. And the flop is 10, 9, 8, if top two it, pair for Pata. All right. Just got it. Bet 500. 500. Okay. But I might have it too. We both have it. If I'm an amateur, there's no one I'd rather play with than Daniel wow. Negrano. Yeah. It's just Good fun. Part. Daniel with the middle pair and a gut shot straight draw. A deuce, no help to Daniel. Pata says he's betting it if he's got it. I'm winning, man. There's a thousand. You're winning? How do you know you're winning? You don't even know what I have. I have more than you. <laughs> you have more chips than I have, but you might not have the best hand. No guarantees of that. Plus, there's like a million draws out here. Here. Come on, Diamond. <laughs> Come on, Diamond. Come on, Nobody has a Diamond draw. River cards an eight. Pata gets the check mark. He's got it. He'll bet it. A thousand. <laughs> what do you have? The best hand, Daniel. He's not bluffing like your friend E Dog. I have no idea what you have. I'll be honest. You want to read it? But not you. I have no clue what you have at all. So that usually means. Your call is not you will see. You're not going to show me? You had a good reader. It's going to cost Daniel a grand. You're talking me out of this one. This is <laughs> You're doing a good job. Come on, let's dance. You want to dance? It will be a record for me to knock out the great Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> What's to knock him out right now? You got me all crazy. <laughs> He's out talking Daniel. Put it all in and I would put it all in. What do you have? I'm so curious. I just might pay to see it. I got no choice. I'm going to just give you this free money. He calls. Two pair is good. Hands full. No. That works too. Nice hand. All right. Merry Christmas. Daniel paid to get the information he wanted. He usually reads well. That was a misread. I want to know the great Daniel. <laughs> so cheap, I had to pay him. Oh, a diamond would have been good. Daniel gave that amateur the poker thrill of a lifetime. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brew for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. Here's tonight's poker fact brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. You need a five or a ten to make a straight in poker. Without one of those two cards, you can never connect five in a row. The 2007 main event saw it all. <laughs> There were surprising twists. <laughs> Amazing moments. Win is gone in 11th place. And colorful characters. It was a remarkable journey for Hal Lebarski. Culminating in a most memorable win for the world champion, Jerry Yang. This year's field of 6,844, the second largest in main event history. Kenny Tran is here. He finished 16th last year. I still have my chip here, right? Do you have a few chips? Oh, not that much. It's not that expensive. Apparently it's so expensive, you can't afford a shirt. <laughs> Alex Kravchenko finished fourth last year in the main event. He's sitting next to Lee Watkinson, who finished eighth. Elsewhere, Philip Helm, who finished ninth last year. His opponent, Rasmus Nielsen, just moved all in with pocket aces. Do you want me to call? I believe that question should be barred from the World Series of Poker. <laughs> I agree. Helm with a pair of trays, both players with straight draws after the turn. Helm started last year's main event final table as the chip leader, but went out ninth. He makes the call here. Nielsen at risk. He flashes the aces. I'm not very strong. Helm just with the pair of threes and an up and down straight draw. One card to come. Nielsen aware of international all-in rules. You must stand up. Helm needs an ace three or six to knock him out. It is a five, and so Nielsen doubles up to <laughs> Philip Helm. Helm left with a mere 4,000 chips. Sometimes one year seems like a long time ago. Yeah, return trip to that main event final table for Hill does not seem likely right now. Back to table two. Daniel Negrano is facing a pre-flop raise from Rauna Juarez. Been re-raised a lot so far, Hoyt. My name is Phil Helm if I get upset, but I ain't worried about it. Yeah, he was going to get in a fight with you one time. 
almost in Tunica, and almost in Mississippi. You almost, you almost got in a fight with Helmuth? Yeah. yeah. It was really well, cool. that would have been a fun thing to bet on. Daniel talking with fellow pro, Hoyt Corkins. Uh, <laughs> Last longer bet. I'm betting a lot of people would like your side. Probably, Phil just doesn't look like he'd be very coordinated in a fight, does he? He just kind of would. I say pick Stop it, Hoyt. He can beat you in a slap fight. <laughs> and Hoyt would just go. <laughs> Lon, I'm a Hoyt Corkins fan, but I'm going to surprise you. I think Phil wins that fight. Wow. Well, Helmuth in the ring with anybody. Imagine the action on that fight. Oh, it'd have to be off the board. All the action go one way. <laughs> Back to our featured table, and Eric Lindgren looks down at five tray of hearts. When Eric finished third to Scotty winning horse, for the most part, he stayed above the fray while table behavior deteriorated. Michelle Abacassis with 6-5 of clubs and the big blind calls. Lindgren had his bluff called by Abacassis a little earlier. These two will square off again. Flop is 8-6-4. Abacassis pairs his sixes. Both have a straight draw. Abacassis checks. Lindgren now with an up and down straight draw. We'll bet 375. He's on a semi bluff. That's why you play those baby suited connectors. When you hit a flop, you figure it misses everyone else. Michelle will come along. Well, he's got a hand. He is going to come along. All right, so turn card now. Queen of clubs. Abacassi still leads with his pair of sixes. And he'll check it again. Lindgren checks as well. This time Eric content to see a free card. River card, 10 of spades. Abacassi earns his check mark with that pair of sixes. And he checks the river. 750. Eric sees an opening, 750. Eric Lindgren going to the bluffing well one more time. Michelle, check your notebook. Check your notebook, my <laughs> friend. Just look at the guy over there. He's a dirty, lying scoundrel. Watch your mouth. His mom might be watching. Abacassis deep in thought, but he will fold. Ah, this time the five high worked. A second there. bluff, this time at the right time. That is the planner's good instinct moment. You keep trying to bluff, you gotta get away with one, right? Uh oh, he's going back to the book. <laughs> Ugly American bluffed me. Chapter two. <laughs> if at first you don't steal the pot, try, try again. <laughs> the planter's good instinct moment is brought to you by planters instinctively good. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Welcome back inside the Rio in the 2008 main event. At our featured table sits Eric Lindgren, and on the Milwaukee's Best Light pocket cam, he has pocket jacks. Well, what's your career record with pocket jacks? Zero for life. Very impressive. And a raise to 250, folded to Michelle Abacassis, he looks down at ace five of clubs. Michelle was the commentator on the French broadcast of the 2006 World Series of Poker. I believe he told ex-wife jokes in French. He makes the call. Julian Mir with ace 10 offsuit also calls. So three players will see the flop. The flop is seven, five, ten. Lindgren is still best with his jacks, and he checks it. Michelle also was a doctor, a magazine editor, and a bridge champion. What have you done with your life, Norman? Good for you. Abacassis bet 575 with bottom pair. Mir now raises it up with a pair of 10s to 1,500. Lindgren's had a great World Series. Five top 20 finishes this year. Lindgren just calls. Actually, I thought Eric might have re-raised there with an overpair to the board, but he doesn't. Abacassis folds, so heads up Mir and Lindgren. Turn card is a 9. Lindgren still good. Adds a gut shot straight draw. You know, now I think he's taking down Social Security numbers. <laughs> Lindgren checks the action over to Mir. He checks two. River card, four of hearts. Lindgren with his pocket jacks earns the check mark. That's why he's a pro. 18. He can win with pocket jacks and bets 1,800. Yeah, and Lindgren value bets at Lon. Mir with a top pair, top kicker. It's, it's a bargain to call. Mir does call, and we'll see his chips go over to the player of the year. Well, looks like the player of the year is still in a zone. Hey, you gotta wonder if Julian was thinking that E-Dog was bluffing again. I say, Eric. Thank you. Eric won his first World Series of Poker Bracelet earlier in the series. How come you're not wearing it? Man, I, I leave that to the guys like Helmuth and stuff. They, they like to wear it and show off or something. 
I gave mine to my father. So. I think he lost it on a golf bat. Eric's not wearing his bracelet, but Daniel's wearing his. I got it on, too. Check that out. It's, it's too big balls. on me, though. Boy, Corkin's no, got two bracelets of his own. You know, otherwise, it would go. Yeah. Everybody cool. But you can fold it in here. And then, well, I'm going to take, take some links out, but I, I learned this new trick where I can go like that. Daniel's made a science of wearing bracelets. I got skinny bracelets. None of them fit. Well, none of his four. One bracelet that does seem to fit is that of first-time winner Jason Young. He's in a hand right now with Doug Crane. Jason bets enough to put Crane all in. Ace, king, queen on the board. Young won his bracelet earlier at this World Series in a no-limit hold'em event. Nice bet. Crane will fold. Jason Young takes the pot. Yes, I probably had you dominated. Well, I bet a thousand on the side. You didn't have me dominated. I know he's got jacked in. One hundred. I'll be about three, three queens. No. Three kings. No. Three aces. Ace no. king. Ace king. Ace king. Ace king. Jack one. You want to see it or you don't want to see it? Okay. You don't care. Yeah. Just for the for the cameras. This one's getting on TV, baby. Jack oh, he flopped a straight. Seems like a nice kid, but he's got to lose the Yankees pinstripes. Nearby, we find Kenny Tran, who also won his first bracelet this year. Just flopped a pair of aces with a jack kicker. He checked it. Patari Kangas flopped a pair of aces with a king kicker and bet 5000 Tran, the great cash game player, finally breaking through in tournaments. They still have a, the main event next year, right? All right, I put you on. Tran bets enough to put Kangas all in. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the 25-year-old student from Finland will call and put himself at risk. But he's ahead. So Kangas trying to double up through the new bracelet winner. Tran needs a jack. River card is another five. And Kangas will win and double up. I'm still alive. Kenny had a great run at last year's main event, but since we last saw the 32-year-old father of three from Los Angeles, he and his family have been through a lot. I got three kids. Uh, my oldest one is Amy, and she's just turned 11. You know, I went home, and she told me, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm so painful, I'm so hurt. And, you know, so we took her to the hospital. I was so scared. I mean, I'm, I'm so afraid. We found out that uh, she has uh, a tumor in her stomach. It's the biggest a volleyball. It's, it's the end of the world. I mean, it's most, the most painful day of my life. And uh, finally, now that's um, after eight months of uh, treatments, uh, she recovers slowly. And she's, I mean, I'm she really, really, really brave. I mean, she's actually stronger than me and her mom. But something like that's only taught you one lesson, that nothing more important than your family. It doesn't matter how much I win or I lose on my poker game, it's nothing matter. I just come back, come home and see my family, my kids. It's, it's, it's what keep, what keep you warm at night. Kenny won his first World Series of Poker bracelet this year on Father's Day, which he said made it even more special. Tran won his bracelet in the Heads Up No Limit Hold'em Championship and earned more than a half million dollars. Back over to table two, Daniel Negrano remains active as usual. Four players saw the flop. Hoyt and Daniel check. Rauna Juarhus bet 200. Action is on Eric Dempsey. Raised to 600. And he's going to raise it up to 600, as you heard the dealer say. Dempsey is an actuary. I've never met an actuary. He has top pair, top kicker. Hoyt's got nothing but a good-looking cowboy hat. And folds. Daniel with flush oh. and straight draws, and he calls. Juarhus will fold. No more for you, huh? So heads up, Negrano and Dempsey. i got to beat you a pot sooner or later. I think this is the one. Where do you meet an actuary? Uh, an actuary saloon? A jack of hearts, and Negrano hit his flush. 15. But Dempsey has the nut flush draw. Well, looks like Daniel's going to beat him in a pot now. Check, see if you got a heart in the hole. That's what you're doing, right? I'm just saying. It's OK. <laughs> Do your thing. <laughs> Take your time. Got one? Yes, he's got one, Daniel. You don't want him to have one, just in case? Dempsey's not going to gamble. Good decision. Indeed, a good decision from Dempsey. Good bluff. Oh, yeah, everyone thinks I bluffed because I didn't show, right? Yeah. I hope you had two. Nice turn. What, I couldn't have a flush, huh? I couldn't have two hearts in the hole over there? I think I did. Me too.
The 2008 World Series of Poker was Eric Lindgren's year. He started quickly by capturing his first World Series bracelet, and that jump-started what would become the closest race ever for Player of the Year. Throughout the series, the top ten was a who's who list of poker greats. But each fell short of the most deserving winner, Eric Lindgren, who made two more final tables and walked away with the Player of the Year title, firmly etching his name in World Series of Poker history. And it all came down to Lindgren and Barry Greenstein. Whoever outlasted the other in that horse championship would grab this title, and Eric did it. Eric Lindgren, like Daniel Negrano, now has been WPT and World Series Player of the Year. You think we can trust you? Huh? You can just reach in and get your own change. Eric talking to Andrea I Pibay. Trust you, I, I, I trust you. He, he doesn't know. Dealers don't trust anybody. <laughs> you trust a poker player? <laughs> All right, action on Michelle Epicacis at this featured table. Jack, eight of diamonds. He limps in for 200. Mirror folds to Pave now. He lays it down. Eric, seven, six offsuit. That's why most of Norman Chad's relationships fall apart. Lack of trust. I trust no one. Epicacis and Lindgren heads up. Now the flop. Michelle pairs his Jack. You never heard the announcer for ESPN? He always gets divorced. Ah. Maybe if he had a little more trust in his relationship, they would last. But suddenly he's Dr. Phil? Plus, he's talking to somebody who lives in Italy. I don't think the guy is that familiar with me. Michelle bets 300 with the lead. If you met Norman, you'd know what I was talking about. You know? Lindgren folds. Sh strange guy. Very strange. Very strange. That's what a lot of bad jokes. Juan, did I tell you the one about the sailor, the Stop. priest, and the actuary? Stop. <laughs> the guy that does it with him, though, Lon. He's the nuts. Oh, suddenly he's a big Lon McEachern fan? <laughs> May the two of you live happily ever after in your miserable lives. We well, really should have Eric at the feature table a little more often. All right, on the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, you see the top five female finishes. Barbara Enright is the only woman to make a main event final table. 13, there are over 200 women in this year's main event field. There's Kathy Liebert, who just doubled up with pocket aces. Good time to double up. <laughs> Kathy has one bracelet, six final tables, and 24 World Series caches. And she had a third-place finish this year. Nearby is rising poker star Vanessa Russo. She just pushed all in against Carl Petrat of Florida. Action on Petrat, who leads with pocket queens. Vanessa's engaged to fellow poker pro Chad Brown. Oh, and Petrat makes the call. And Vanessa is behind, but with a flush draw. Vanessa has five World Series caches, but she'll need help to extend her tournament life here. That jack is no help. She still needs an ace or a heart. Ace or a heart. River card. And she got the ace. So Vanessa rivers that ace to stay alive. Dishes out the tough beat to the amateur. 16. Last catch. Well, I wasn't going to fold him. This was 5,000. I think I'm... Ah, my girl got her money in just fine. Now that that's settled, I wouldn't mind getting a wedding invitation in the mail. I know you send good gifts. All right, back to table two. Negrano and three others saw the flop. Daniel got the best of it, hitting top pair. He bets 400. Juarhus now will lay it down. David Ike folds. Action on John Mars. He'll stick around with a flush draw. He's a 41-year-old from Oakland, Michigan. Turn card now is a four of spades. Mars adds a gut shot straight draw and checks. Daniel loves that board. Pair of tens, he bets 1,100. And Mars will follow. Don't blame him for calling. Implied odds, Lon. I'll explain it to you during the commercial. Five of spades on the river. I know implied odds are just the pot odds adjusted for future betting. Dang. Negrano gets the check mark. Mars with a pair of fives checks. Daniel getting low on chips. He bets 2,400. 2,400. Mars can only beat a bluff here. He, he really can only call if he doesn't think Daniel has an honest face. How could you not think that face is honest? Oh, that's a tell. Mars does call. And Daniel's tens are best. I finally hit one. Mars, the World Series rookie, just learned that experience at the biggest game on Earth is a valuable asset in getting you to day two at the main event. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Back inside the crowded Rio poker room, where getting noticed is easy for some. What are you going to do with the Italian stadium now? Yes, I'm all We're all listening to Silvio Formica. I'm the greatest player in the world and never won a major tournament. Now, how do you like it now? We pull it to the rail. 
Don't you ever try to beat me. Report to the rail. Oh. There's the bluff right there. I had the best day going in. Don't worry about it. I didn't. He, I didn't outdraw him. He outdrawed me. Yes, sir. Report yes, to the sir. rail is a keeper. I hate when I get outdrawed. Back to table two and Daniel on the ground. Wait, if it's all right with you, I'm going to play a few pots today. Okay, you, you take the lead. You just let me know when you want to play one and I'll run out of your way. I won't play many. <laughs> all right, till later. <laughs> Four players saw the flop. Daniel with ace 10 again. Hit top pair again. And he's going to bet 325. How much more do I have? Yeah. Are you being serious? Yeah. That's Andy Potter. I've got about 18,000. You're scaring me by asking me that question. I'm getting all the GVs now. Everyone started with 20,000. Okay, next time. All right, next Audible time. Full. Next, it's up to you now. What do you got? 325, 325, going once. 325 to the button. I resigned myself to fold long 325, time 325, went out of the big blind, I throw it away. All right, ace 10 wins again. Everyone ace folded. Ace the seven seed. Give me that money. Show it, show it. Oh, show it, show it. Flip him, flip him, flip him. Ace 10. I wasn't lying. turn those in. I don't mind showing my card. <laughs> almost got the trips. You will be in trouble. You almost got the trips? <laughs> like, I almost had a royal flush. It was just five cards off. <laughs> almost doesn't count in poker, and it also doesn't count in hockey, as Daniel Negrano found out when he went heads up with Norman Chad. Today, Daniel's challenge is to score six goals and ten tries against me while answering questions about him. Daniel, as a teenager, you gambled in pool halls. Now you're gambling on the golf course. Do you consider this progress? Well, seeing as I won when I played pool and I'm probably like the biggest donkey loser on the golf course, I have to say no. Okay, well, let's see how good you are at hockey. Oh! Hey! <laughs> what was all that? He freaked me out. Oh, my goodness. Goal! If you weren't allowed to talk at the poker table, would you lose every day? Well, I don't know that I'd lose every day, but it would certainly be boring. Go, stick boy. Ooh, I'm shaking. Gee, this guy's yeah. like a wall. He's got to tell. Yeah, he knows I'm going right every time. There we go. There we go. You grew up in Canada, now you live in America. What's it take to get you to move back to Canada? Move the World Series of Poker to Toronto and you got me. You'd have home felt advantage. Oh, it hit the post! All right, it all comes down to this, bluff boy. <laughs> Score on me and you win. I block and you lose. There we go. <laughs> oh, he's off front. <laughs> That's got to be hot in that thing. Yeah, it is. Get out of that stuff. He grew up with the game, and I'm wearing 37 pounds of hockey gear on parking lot asphalt on the hottest day of the year. Oh, that's fair. It was only 109 that day. It's not hockey food, it's brain food. Athletes are drawn to the competitive nature of poker. Hockey, good for the poker. Greg Mueller played pro hockey in Europe. And there's another pro, baseball star, 1988 World Series MVP, Oral Hershiser. Oral, a pretty good poker player, but all his chips are at risk. <laughs> Whatever, you want to do. Whatever you want to do. You've already had a massage. <laughs> Everyone folds and Oral will take the pot. I can't show. <laughs> Oral's card protector is a sinker ball. And he will sign it and hand it over to whomever knocks him out if he gets knocked out. Back to our feature table where we find Eric Lindgren. He's a pretty good athlete as well. He showed you a thing or two on the basketball court last year. Yeah, everybody shows me a thing or two. <laughs> Eric also knows his way around the golf course pretty well. All right, action continues at this feature table. Andrea Pave looks at ace king of clubs. And this guy's a better writer than me. He's a novelist and screenwriter. 36 years old at his first World Series. He raises to 900. Lindgren with pocket force. You know, one of these days, I'm going to get one of these guys out there to play skee ball, and we'll see who's king of the oh, hill. Oh, yeah. Lindgren will call. And he'll go up against Pave once again. The flop is ace four. Ace, wow. Lindgren hits a full boat. Pave trip aces. Wow, this might be a big pot. 14. 1,400. What a tough spot for Pave with trip aces, top kicker. It would be difficult for a pro, never mind an amateur, to get away from a hand like this in the main event. Pave bet 1,400. Lindgren raised to 4,200 with his full boat, and Pave calls to the turn now. Turn card, six of clubs. Eric Lindgren still way ahead with his full house. Pave adds a flush draw and checks. Eric makes it 9,000. Pave senses trouble. Cool. But a quick call. 
But this is a spot where many players might push all in and then would be in really deep trouble. River card is a 10. Langren with four is full, has the check mark. Pave checks. Eric bets about half the pot, 14,000. That's most of Pave's chips. So tough for him to get away from this. It's a big pot. Well, that is it for me. Yeah, if he calls, he's all but done. Oh, man. Trip aces and top kicker. He must think his hand's good. Very unfortunate. Wow, action flop. You got force, Mr. Linger? Yes, he does. Pave's radar is up and running well. You got force. This would be a huge laydown. You got fours. You got fours. Four, 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 four. A lot of fours. Two red fours. Well, they're not both wow. red line, but they are both fours. I call. He That's calls it. anyway. You got fours. He has fours. What a difficult and devastating hand for Pave. They will play, though. He's not out, but he's crippled. Such a lucky flop. Yeah, it seems Lady Luck is still smiling down on the 2008 Player of the Year. His main event hopes are thriving. Back inside the Rio, over to table two, Daniel Negranu continues to be active. He's hooked up with fellow Canadian Darus Suharto on the turn. Daniel bets 700 with trip eight, Suharto with pocket sixes. What we call the Johnny Chan play. Chan likes to do that a lot. Check call the flop with a paired board and then bet the turn. But you never know if he actually has the eight or if he's just making a move with a flush draw. Ooh. Daniel beats you, <laughs> teaches you, and entertains you. Chan does it a lot, I don't. Okay, you got it this time. So Hardo's gonna fold after that. Uh, I'm gonna show you one card that should tell you what I have. What do you think I got? If I showed you that. Come on, you don't know? I had the eight. I had the eight. Daniel in full voice today. I wasn't messing with you that time. Like Daniel Suharto from Toronto, Canada. <laughs> winner. Winner. Negrano once held the record for youngest bracelet winner at the World Series. Here on the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, you see the youngest to ever win the main event. Phil Helmuth still holds the record. Phil Ivey should have added his name to that list five years ago. There are quite a few talented young players in the field today. We've already seen 25-year-old Vanessa Russo. Holy f I can't believe I just won that. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Surprised ah, to have won the pot on the river. Definitely is a boat. I mean, if she's getting married to Chad Brown, I really should be there. Vanessa is a graduate of wow. Duke University. She later went on to law school. So scary. I bet out. Did I really just win that? Oh, my this goodness. guy's glad she's engaged. At another table, 26-year-old bracelet winner Jason Young deciding how much to raise pre-flop. Young raises enough to put David Dawkins all in. I like Jason Young. He's a good kid. I hope he knows he's up against evil. Doug Crane will fold. Jason on his feet to see what he's up against, and he's in pretty good shape as Ace King against Dawkins, Ace Queen. Hi, son. But that indeed is Dawkins' nickname, and he is all in. The flop is no help to Dawkins. On the turn card, he comes up short, and the river card is no good. Young wins the hand and will send David Dawkins packing back to Buckhorn, North Carolina. Good stamps out evil. Jason came out to the World Series after quitting his job for the Parks Department in upstate New York. He's won a bracelet, and he's doing well here in the main event. Doing quite well, Jason Young. Got to do something about that Yankees jersey, though. <laughs> At a nearby table, we find last year's main event ninth place finisher, Philip Hilm. Hilm just looked more imposing last year, Lon. Uh, this year, he looks like a guy who I sat next to in fourth grade. Throws out a bet. That induces a fold. So Philip Helm rebuilding his stack slowly. Thank you. Thank you. Last year, Helm dramatically eliminated Scotty Wynn and took the chip lead going into the final table. Yet when Helm's aggressive play met Jerry Yang's hot streak, there were some real fireworks. I had lots of fun busting Scotty. Can't even stack my chips now. Come and get some more, baby. He had lots of uh, people expecting him to reach the final table. I call. And I call for Philip Helm. Scotty win. It was either Scotty or it was me. Scotty win is gone. He didn't make the final two. You can compare it to me and Jerry Yang. You're way behind Philip. I believe you, Jerry. Jerry had been running really hot. Four million. He was my optical, I was his optical. Molin. Get him out of the way. 
I could just cruise the whole way to first place. I call. The figure was that there were two players at that table who were going for the victory, and yes! one of those players won. Yang has eliminated Philip Hill! In my opinion, I played it the right way. I would do the same thing again. Yeah, well, if I were chip leader going into the main event final table and got eliminated first by a social worker, I might not do the same thing again. Slowly building. Just saying. All right, so Hilm on the uptick. We'll keep an eye on him. There you see the great vantage point. The folks in the Milwaukee's Best Light No Limit Lounge here have at the Rio. Getting back now to action at the feature table. Eric Lindgren here hoping that he hasn't burned all his luck. Winning player of the year. Trying to finally cash in the main event. Eric looks down at Pocket Kings. You know, when Eric looks back at this World Series, he may regret he didn't win multiple bracelets. He played very well, and he had chances. He raised to 800 with those Kings over to Jake Melendi in the small blind with Ace Queen, and he calls. Melendi is a history major at Keene State in New Hampshire. I could have gotten into there, I bet. Melindy and Lindgren heads up now to the flop. The flop is Queen. Do seven. Melindy with a pair of Queens, but he's way behind the Kings of Lindgren. Melindy checks. How tough can Keene State be? 1,400 from Lindgren and his Kings. Oh. That's a safe flop for Eric to bet. Dangerous flop for Melendi with top pair, top kicker. Melendi calls. Turn card, jack of spades. No help to Melendi. And he checks again. How many Supreme Court justices went to Keene State? I'd imagine none. Check, check to the river. Eric with a stutter step there. Eight of clubs on the river. Lindgren now with a check mark. Melendi checks again. Keen State doesn't even have a cafeteria. It has a vending machine. Eric makes it 3,200 to stick around. Call. And a quick call. It's good. And a nice play from Eric. I think that check on the turn got Lindgren paid off on the river. Card rack over here. Never a bad thing. Yeah. Got to admit, it feels kind of good. Yeah, to get off to a good start. No yeah, I've never made day three. Neither have I, buddy. Elsewhere in the field, Kenny Tran has made it way past day three. Finished 16th in the main event last year. He bet 2,500 on the flop. Action on Jeremy Renz. Amateur from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Makes it 8,000. John Zimmerman folds. Kenny Tran went up to go all in to call this. Tough sledding for him. He gets raised by the flush draw for all his chips. Kenny's got top pair. Right, I think you have and all his chips are pinned on those hopes. Well, Kenny's read is true. Now he needs the cards to be true for him. So Kenny Tran at risk. Turn card now. <laughs> is a spade and Renz hits his flush and that will finish it. Kenny Tran knocked out of the main event. Good luck, gentlemen. Oh, he'll just go take 10,000 off some tourist in an LA cash game. So Kenny Tran making his exit here. And he'll go home now to his family, and he'll be carrying his first World Series bracelet with him. Next Tuesday, the main event journey begins for a new cast of characters. And on November 11th, the highly anticipated final table. The November 9 will compete for the most coveted prize in poker. Every Tuesday night at 8 and 9 p.m., it's the World Series of Poker on ESPN. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Life, brewed for a man's taste, Miller Brewing Company, and in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. Welcome back to the Rio and the 2008 main event. No sense lying, we're almost done. <laughs> 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 poker players are allowed to lie. So oh. Don't hold it against them. It's just what, <laughs> it's what we do. <clears throat> Only at the poker table. Poker players lie in confessional. <laughs> Lindgren has 8-6 offsuit. Eric, one of many poker players who loves golf. He likes it partly, he says, because it gets him outside. Eric's going to mix it up a little. Raise the 800 with that 8-6. Julian Mir with King Queen of Clubs. Mir began playing poker in fourth grade in Bethesda, Maryland with Tony the Ice Cream Man in his ice cream truck after school. I always wondered about those long lines of the ice cream truck. <laughs> From the big blind, he calls. Heads up with Lindgren. Three Queen Jack. A pair of Queens for Mir to take a big lead. And he checks. Eric's got zilch. Nine. Nine. Lindgren bets 900. Pop him, buddy. Tony the Ice Cream Man would. Just a call. Top pair. Ah. They will see the turn. Turn card. King's up now for Mir, and he earns the check mark and checks. 
Eric's got zilch. Eric bets, though, 2100 Go ahead, my man. You are allowed to check raise a pro, especially when the pro is drawing dead. Ah! Tulane student just calls again. Well, who's winning this hand? River card now is a 10 and four cards to a straight on the board. Mir with that check mark. Maybe Mir is waiting to hear the ice cream truck music before betting. He checks a third time. I don't know whether Eric, who has zilch, wants to fire a third round of hooey. He does. It's a small bet, though, 2,600. Eric is in a bluffing mood today, and this bluff he disguises as a value bet. That River 10 did make it easier for Eric to bluff. I've got to buy the kid an ice cream cone and talk to him. Mir, top two pair. And oh, he no! follows them. Oh, man. Wow. Eric fires three times with nothing. And for Eric, nothing is not squaw douche. Quite a power play from Lindgren taking the two-lane boy to school. All right, to the outer tables now at this massive Rio poker room. We find 2006 world champ Jamie Gold all in with King Queen. He is trailing the pocket queens of Pat Pezen. Nice. And that will do it. Jamie Gold eliminated from the 2008 main event. And for Jamie Gold, no caches at the 2008 World Series. Pezen is from Toronto, Canada. He is the captain of the Canadian national bocce team. And we say goodbye to Jamie Gold. It's another year. We do our best. Another early exit from the main event for Jamie Gold. Back now to table two, and Pat Pezen's good friend Daniel Negrano, who holds pocket sixes, he raised it to 200. Action is on Andy Potter now. Two dollars. Where are you going with those blues? Six? Huh? 600 chips. Must have something good over there. With pocket nines. Daniel works the table like Sinatra used to work a cocktail party. Very smooth. John Mars gets out of the way, as does Eric Dempsey. Cold. So heads up, Negrano and Pata. Never know what might come out there, right? Two players. Pata ahead with his pocket nines. And there is a nine in there for Pata and a six for Negrano. Checks. Set over set. Negrano checked. We had? <laughs> we got about 19,000. Typically the top pros do well on day one unless their big hand runs into another big hand. Daniel set up against a bigger set here. What do you bet, 15? Pata puts out a bet at 1,900. I said 19. Oh, 19. Because you have 19,000. Oh, okay. oh, I see. 19,000, 19 million. <clears throat> well, I'm not going anywhere. That's for sure. 3,000 more. A raise. Pull in. Wow. I call. All in on the call. Daniel's going to hate this. You got me, buddy. Negrano at risk and behind. Just like that, set over set. Oh, Daniel I all in and all but yeah. out of here. Well done. Well done. Good hand. I thought you had aces or kings. Potter with a chance to knock out the great Daniel. You got more than me, right? Yeah, way more. He does have Daniel covered. Turn card is no help to Negranu. And now Negranu suddenly down to perhaps his last card. Only the K6 saves him from an abrupt exit at this main event. It's a seven. And that will do it. I defeated the great Daniel Negranu. He did indeed. All right, man. I well, I'm in shock. I <laughs> Sorry. Read that history. <laughs> good luck, man. Play Sorry. good. Daniel started that hand with almost 20,000 in chips. Gets knocked out by the man who asked for his autograph before they began. Poker's a tough game. Huh? Shoot to you. But I'm listening. He's listening to my tape. <laughs> I'm listening right. to you. Daniel was so primed for a long I run here in the main tape. event. No, I, I but knocked it. out on day book. one. You're writing in the record. So that's how you know I had a set and you had a better yeah, yeah. set? <laughs> Gracious even in defeat. This is now Mike Mattiso, version 4.0. And I've got to tell you, if this latest new and improved mouth sticks, I like what I see. Easy pickings. Mike surveying his featured table today. More than half of them are main event rookies. Damn, I'm almost the oldest person at this table. That's so scary. I feel like about 18. I still act about five. This will be the last of 55 bracelets to be handed out at the 2008 World Series of Poker. The winner's share of the prize pool, $9.1 million. On the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam, Vince Caesar looks down at Jack 10, offsuit from St. Louis. Caesar's getting married soon, hopes this can help pay for the wedding. Good luck. He limps in for 100. Kim Vodka from Osaka, Japan, ace four of hearts. She is single. I can be. She calls Salman Ali. 
a Miami student, ace, deuce of spades. He calls. He's also single. I have no interest. Cornell Pazara from San Jose. Sales and marketing, 9-6 off suit. He was born in Romania, and his nickname is Romaniac. Here's a guy who thinks he's on the internet. He raises with 9-6. To Matiso now with pocket kings in the small blind. See, man, you just can't just let him punish you like that. You just got to right. put a little power into him, you know? Raise to 1850. The mouse re-raise should clear out the shoe clerks and crumb bums. Big blind, Peter Bush folds. Caesar gives it up. Vodka folds as does Ali. All right, Mike, maybe I'll get lucky against you. Maybe. 400 more. Mike's the one looking lucky here. He got it heads up against the worst hand that was in. Azara, the only one at the table older than Mattiso. They go heads up. The flop, eight, deuce, queen, all diamonds. Both players with a flush draw, but Mattiso with a better flush draw. Well, this is even better news for the mouth because Bazaar might stick around with that flush draw. Oh. And he does call the 1400. Turn card now. Another queen. Mattiso earns the check mark with kings up. And he checks. The mouth might be worried Bazaar has a queen in his hand. Pizarro is almost two years older than uh, Madison. Maybe Mike respecting his elders. <laughs> Pizarro is in sales and marketing. He's going to try to sell it here. 2100. And Madison quickly calls. River card now is a nine. That pairs Pizarro, but his two pair trail Madison's two pair. Mike checks. What's that? Kings. What's that? Kings. Kings are good. Kings, Kings are way good. Two kings are going to be good. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Madison takes the pot. I have to give him some voice. <laughs> I told y'all, you're going to give me a lot of chips, and you're going to moan about it. So off and running is the mouth as his adventure begins. Norman with main event feels so large every year now. Who would ever predict a well-known pro to win it all? Yet it seems almost every year at least one big name makes a big run, and a very big mouth is often one of those names. Indeed, Lon. Mike Mattiso has made a deep run at the main event three times this decade in 01, 04, and 05. So if you are handicapping the field, he might be a good mouth to put your money on. Then again, he might just blow up and go out in a blaze of glory. Man, I love the main event. I'm just here for your entertainment value, boys and girls. And Mike never disappoints. Out in the field today, the third of our four day one sessions, 1,928 players started today. Six. Out there is six-time bracelet winner T.J. Cloutier. 26. T.J. twice runner-up in the main event. It was third another time. Lately, he's been having trouble getting past day one. Hell, I had, I had a hand that was named after me, Jack Nine. Oh. T.J.'s had a lot of luck with that Jack Nine over the years and takes the pot with it there. <laughs> Elsewhere in the field, 2003 main event champ Chris Moneymaker, but Chris is not here alone. He's being observed by Donald Hobbs. Hobbs is a young man whom Moneymaker befriended after Hobbs was seriously injured in a car accident. Moneymaker has not cashed in the main event since his breakthrough title. Hobbs is here hoping to pick up some last-minute tips before he plays in the main event in the final session. Great flop from my hand. Also here in the field is main event champ Huck Seed. He won it in 1996, and he's in a hand right now with Chris Miranda. Both players flop trip sevens, but Miranda has top kicker and raised enough to put Huck all in, and Huck calls. And Huck Seed now is going to need a queen three or nine to stay alive. River card is a deuce, and that's it. Huck seat gone in a flash. Hard to lay that down on when you thought about it. But... So Miranda with a big notch on his belt as he knocks off a former world champion. That was a quick one. <laughs> what time is it? Anyone know what time it is? Uh... It's a quarter to three. No one in the place. <laughs> Let's check out a table two where former main event champ Joe Hashem is playing. First to act, though, on the hand is Spencer Benjafield. He works in the oil and gas fields in England. He's got ace-queen offsuit. Calls. He limps in for 100. Hashem with pocket tens. Five raises to 500. Makes it 500 to play. John Mooka from Irvine, California with pocket eights. Mooka owned a hair salon for 30 Eight years, calls. and he's got a nice head of hair. And he calls. Maybe he can uh, work on uh, Benjafield's mop. <laughs> so three players to the flop. Flop is 9-8. Trey Muka with a set of eights. Benjafield missed that. He's first to act. He checks. Hashem with an over pair to the board. Hashem says he loves the buzz he feels at the World Series, and he loves to bet this flop, but he's not going to like it. He does bet 1,500. Muka raises to 3,000. Benjafield says so long. And 
Hasselbrand with his pocket tens. Hashem raises to 5,000. A misstep from Hashem. And with a set of eights, Mooka says re-raise. Advantage Mooka here. He's got more hair and a better hand. <laughs> and Hashem calls to so another former world champ in a hole early. We just saw Huxied go out. It's a four on the turn. Mooka still way ahead. Check. Hashem checks. I'm all in. And Mooka all pushes. A cool. And Hashem makes the call. Oh, my. What I was afraid of. We were all afraid of it. Nice hand. Hashem has Mooka covered. Oh, there we But not by much. This would take most of Hashem's chips away. He can only knock out Mooka with a River 10. River card. Oh! It's a 10! Oh! And Mooka is stunned. Poker champions hit River cards. Hair stylists cut hair. Wow, Joe Hashem caught a break there. One time for Joe Hashem. Wasn't rooting for you, Joe. Sorry, man. Mooka had his shot, but Hashem got off the hook. If I ever complain about a bad beat again, just remind me of this. <laughs> a world champion suck out. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at worldseriesofpoker.com. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Life main event. Back inside the Rio on the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, a reminder of the current chip colors and denominations. All players begin with 20,000 in chips. Among the top pros in the field today, John Jawada, three-time bracelet winner. He's in a hand right now with main event rookie, 22-year-old Matt Ross from Liverpool, New York. Jawanda puts out a bet. Oh, Ross growls at Jawanda. <laughs> I have the same hand as last hand. You win. Jawanda 12th all-time in World Series caches, but hasn't won a bracelet since 2003. Elsewhere, we find Jeff Madsen. He won both his bracelets in 2006. He's in a big hand right now with Ken Liu. Pair of sixes on the flop. Madsen's pocket tens lead Liu's pocket trays. And there's a tray on the turn. Madsen is hurting. Liu with a full house. Call it. Call it. Let's look at him. Madsen all moves in all in, though. Point Jake. And a call from Lou. Wow. And Jeff Madsen sees the bad news. He's all in and well behind. Only a 10 or a 6 saves him. River card is a 6, wow. and Madsen wins it. I'll take, I'll take the river. Poker champions game. hit river cards. Guys with baseball caps on backwards sit with no chips. So sixes full of 10s will win the pot for Madsen. Poker's easy. Yeah, it might be easy, but it sure is heart-stopping. All right, let's head back over to our featured table where Mike Mattiso is in the center ring, and a lot of people around the main event have noticed that Mike looks a little trimmer this year. Serious, have you been really working out, Mike? I, will, I haven't been since the World Series. But you look thinner. I lost 60 pounds. I mean, what do you want? 40 of that was ego. I want to give you a compliment and you say thank you. I think that's about how it works. In uh, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you. Greg Geller noticed Mike's dramatic weight loss, but that was just the beginning to a whole new outlook on life and poker for the mouth. Last year, I weighed a lot and didn't like the way I looked, and Ted Forrest just said, wow, how fat are you? And I said, oh, I just got on the scale yesterday and it said 241, I almost puked. It's hard to believe it. 2001, I weighed 181, and then he goes, I'll bet you 100,000 you can't get back there. I go, you got to bet. I started working out real hard. Man, I feel much better. Oh, this is what exercise does for you. I was running an hour of cardio a day. Uh, meanwhile, I was just drinking protein shakes. and I mean, I didn't eat a piece of bread for five months. I'm tired, man. 12.01 on June 3rd. I weighed in at 179. Greatest accomplishment in my life. I got a lot of heart, baby. Yeah. A lot of heart. I've been through rough, rough times in my life. I've been through mental hell, every which way you could think of. And I, I can't ever remember anything more mentally torturous than when I'm trying to make that weight loss bet. Mike's back! Yeah. Watch out! Last year, it just dawned on me that I'm always negative, so went out and bought a bunch of books on the power of positive thinking, and um, when I accomplished that, I knew I was gonna have a big World Series. Yes! Yeah! Mike, uh, all I can say is I am incredibly proud to award you your third World Series of Poker. Yeah! When you believe in yourself, and you have the confidence, and you believe in the power of positive thinking, it's amazing. 
Yeah, the old Mike believed he was the unluckiest player alive. The new Mike, you heard him say it, believes in the power of positive thinking. I just like the all-around new Mike. I'm happy Mike, skinny Mike, love life Mike. Song in his heart. And two hearts in the pocket, ace king for Mattiso. Really a sick structure. And he limps in. Action folds to Greg Geller from Denver. He flips houses for a living, ace jack of diamonds. And he limps in. In the big blind, Kim Vodka looks down at 6-4. I have to check the paperwork on my marriage. <laughs> Checks her option three to the flop. And Mattiso hits top pair. He's got top kicker. Vodka missed that flop. She checked. Mattiso checks with the best hand. Geller hit the ace, too, but his kicker's no good. He bets 300. And Geller likes his aces, understandably. Vodka folds. And Mattiso raises to seven and a quarter. Well, the new Mike doesn't mind check raising. Geller now with the second best ace comes along. Heads up to the turn. Turn card is a nine of diamonds. A flush draw now for Geller. Mattiso checked. 1,200. Geller bets it. Sure, if I'm Geller, I think I have the best hand. That's why me and Geller don't win. <laughs> Mattiso has the best hand and makes a call. River card is another ace. Trips for both. Mattiso gets the check mark with the king kicker, and he checks again. Geller makes it 3,000. The mouth has to believe it's possible. Geller has ace queen and has filled up. I wish the new Mike would think out loud like his buddy Daniel Negreanu. Ooh. You want to hear what goes through that mind? <laughs> I also wouldn't mind if the new Mike shaved. He calls. Oh, good. Okay. And Madison takes the pot. Pads his stack with the help of Greg Geller. Yes. And the new Mike, steady as he goes, stays on an even keel. Yeah, Madison running good so far. Geller came up just short, and the mouth has even more reason to roar. This is going to be a fun day. I'm just trying to make it through the day. That's all I want to do. Welcome back to the Rio. Each year at the main event, we meet many interesting people, hear many interesting news stories, and this year is no different. One such person is Mike Wilson. Mike was born without any arms, but that has not stopped him from living life to the fullest, including playing poker. Right now, Mike is in a hand against top pro and recent bracelet winner J.C. Tran. Tran won his first WPT title in 2007 and his first World Series bracelet in 2008. And Wilson will put out a bet of 1,300 to Tran. J.C. Tran, a no-limit hold'em specialist, one of the best in the game. All right. Uh, well, Mike put a little pressure on J.C., and J.C. lays it down, and Mike Wilson wins the pot. And I've heard of you before. <laughs> so Wilson off to a good start. Elsewhere, a man who had a good start and a great finish to the 06 main event, David Einhorn. He finished 18th that year. Einhorn is president of a successful hedge fund and is credited with correctly predicting recent financial trends. What, he couldn't call me before I bought a house in Las Vegas three years ago? <laughs> It looks like his business instincts are spot on and carrying again over to the poker table. I told you we're going to have some fun today. Nearby is another player you may remember from 2006. The cameras are here. They are here for Dimitri Nobles, the talkative former car salesman from Houston who had a memorable rise and fall in that main event. So much, man. I'm going to show you a bluff, too. I'm going to show you a bluff when you fall. He's in a big hand with Henry Tran right now. Tran moves all in, and he's way ahead. I think Dimitri would play better with the visor right side up. Dimitri's going to lose that hand, and Tran will double up through a suddenly silenced Dimitri Nobles. How do you call this? Well, that's how you become a champion. I should have zipped it up for once. You call it anyway? Well, why you take so long, man? You're taking life off of me. Hey, eventually we all die. So Dimitri loses a chunk of chips. The spectators are shoulder to shoulder here in the Rio Poker Room. Many wanting to catch a glimpse of Joe Hashem at table two. He's in a hand with Torsten Gubel right now after the flop. Both have two aces, but Gubel's king kicker gives him the advantage. Turn card is a seven, and that pairs the board. King kicker still plays for Gubel. Gubel, a software engineer. Bet 2, That's 2,500 into Hashem. Hashem quickly calls. The 05 champion in the uncustomary position again, getting his money in bad. But that queen on the river makes it all good for Hashem. He's got aces and queens and earns the check mark. Check. 
Double checks. Should I bet now? You got lucky. Why wouldn't you bet now? I'm almost scared to bet. Kasha maybe fears Google has a seven in his hands. I think I have to bet, but I'm scared. Or perhaps just a little Hollywooding from Joe. <laughs> I have to bet, but I'm scared to bet. Winston Churchill didn't make speeches this long before betting. Two and a half. Bet two and a half. Twenty-five hundred. Cool. And a call oh. from Google. We asked the sugar thing. Ace is up. Hashem is Ooh. loving the river today. Ooh-wee. How do you guys always have a hand? How do you do it? You always have a hand, not better get lucky then. I can't get lucky all day. Poker champions hit river cards, software engineers get lectured. Hashem's been lucky twice on the river today, a stressful way to get through the main event. Back to the feature table now. Three players in a hand. Mike Matasso, Roberto Romanello, and Greg Geller. Matasso with pocket nines. Romanello has pocket jacks. Geller leads them both with two kings. Three big pocket pairs. I smell trouble. <laughs> Flop now is ace, jack, king. Geller hit his set of kings. Romanello a set of jacks. And that missed Matasso. Set over set. Now I really smell trouble. Matasso does check. Romanello. Owns a fish and chip shop in Wales, and he checks, and Geller checks. Geller should have fired away. Too many draws on that board. Turn card is a 10. Geller still leads with his three kings. But see, someone's got to have Broadway now, don't they? Well, nobody does, but somebody should. Matiso checked it. Romanello now checks it over to Geller, who leads, and he checks. What, I got to get a court order to make this guy bet? Another 10 on the river. Geller gets the check mark with kings full. Matiso's lucky he didn't hit that nine. He checks. Romanello now will bet 1,800 with Jack's full. Yeah, bad time for Jack's full. Man, you're right, Lon. Pocket Jacks are impossible to play. <laughs> Geller now, King's full, and the check mark will raise it to 6,000. Well, you know, now Geller's check check looks brilliant. He's got Romanello trapped. Madison gets out of the way. Now to Romanello, needs 4,200 to call. Just don't raise me. Geller playing games with Romanello. You sure if I pass? Pardon me? You sure if I pass? No. One time? No. The only thing preventing Romanello from pushing all in, and I would have yelled out Heidi Ho an hour ago, was that Geller made a big pre-flop raise, so he could have pocket aces or pocket kings. And unless Romanello's going Hollywood on us, he's actually considering mucking his jacks full, which would be an unconscious laydown. I mean, if he lays this down, I'll move to a Franciscan monastery and become head chef. <laughs> Okay, I'll show. Geller trying to move things along. Is he really thinking of folding this? Okay. He does. No way he folds. He said he would. Let's go. Fold. You're out. Your hand's dead. Let's go. And shows. Wow. How do you fold that hand? Romanello folds Jack's full. Wow. And that is the player's good instinct moment. (laughs) Oh, my God. I could never have folded that hand. Unbelievable. Nice fold. Wow. Okay, I would never have folded that hand. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. I knew I was beat. Last, I'm, you, that is the fold of the tournament when you that I've ever know. seen. Are there even grocery stores near monasteries? How do I draw tables with people like this? Never. <laughs> I mean, there's 72 million idiots out there, and I gotta drop guys laying jacks fold down and being right. Romanello may sell fish for a living, but he showed he's not one there. <laughs> The Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. Poker was once considered a man's game, but that's not the case at the main event. See, that means I always have a hand. Where women of all ages come out to show the boys they belong. Hope to see you in November. Today in the Rio Poker Room, certainly a big day for the ladies with many of the top female players in action, like Evelyn Ng. She is longtime buds with fellow Toronto native Daniel Negreanu. And Evelyn seems to have a fan <laughs> nearby. Boy, she is too high maintenance for me, Lon. <laughs> <laughs> I want a grape. Oh, she wants a grape. I used to give my first ex-wife prunes. <laughs> All right, elsewhere, we find Cloney Gowan, nine caches at the World Series, but yet to cash in the main event. And ace three. Ace yeah. three was, was the biggest Cloney knocks out an opponent. I saw Cloney on poker after dark drinking a glass of red wine. Be still my heart. I hope you're filming me for the next 10 days. 
<laughs> if there's one player in the room today who the ladies owe a debt of gratitude, it is Aussie native Marsha Wagoner. Marsha, one of the pioneers for women in poker. Marsha, a first-class lady. She can play all the games and one of the inaugural inductees into the Women in Poker Hall of Fame this year. She's been playing in the World Series for 30 years, and she takes down a pot here. I've had the pleasure of playing with Marsha many times at Hollywood Park in Los Angeles, and she's had the pleasure of taking my chips. On the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, we see that Barbara Freer was the first woman to enter the main event in 1978. In 86, Wendine Eolas the first to cash, and Barbara Enright was the first woman to make a final table in 1995. Back to table two. Joseph Hashem playing another pot from behind. His pocket sevens are trailing the two aces of Spencer Benjafield. After the flop, Benjafield still leads. I'm all in. He moves all in. Whatever Joe Hashem had for breakfast this morning, he doesn't ever want to have again. Every time we look in on him, he's behind in a hand. It's unhashem like And after that bet, it might be an uncallable hand. And Hashem does give it up. Poker champions fold to all-in bets on the flop. Oil workers taking all the chips on the flop. <laughs> nice bet, sir. I'm looking forward to being able to do that myself. I'm looking forward to busting his <laughs> all the way back to England. That's what I'm looking forward to. Easy. It'll take, it'll happen. Temper, temper. So no luck for Hashem there, certainly frustrated with the goings-on at table two. Back to our feature table, and they're still buzzing about that great Jack's full laydown by Roberto Romanello. I tell you, man, this kid gets it. This guy's Roberto. I'm hiring him. That's right. He is my main man, boys and girls. I'm your man, Mike. What do monks eat? Not much, but you're going to look good in that robe. <laughs> Pocket fives for Cornell Pazara. Bazaar dreams of opening a poker room in Romania one day. Limps in for 300. Pocket aces for Madiso. The mouth keeps getting big hands to play. Mike reaching for chips. And the pro will raise it to 1425. I should fold this in, Mike. <laughs> I call. <laughs> I was uh, hoping you might fold too, possibly. Bazaar is going to call. But I don't know. I'll let you know in a minute. Heads up to the flop. And the flop is 9-6-5, and Pizarra with a set of fives. That did not take a minute. Wow. Check. Pizarra checks. Now Mikey's not going to like this one. Pocket aces bets 2,500. Again trying to steal Mikey. Raise. Raise to 6,500. Got a lot of chips, huh? I, th I thought we were going to play hard against each other. Oh, no. I would have checked all the way down. Bizarre trying to mess with the mouth. Come on, I'm giving you a lot of information, brother. You should fold that. All right. Wow. Here's your information. Wow. Madison's going to raise it enough to put Pizarro oh, all in. Right? Oh, Mike, you're going to knock me out, baby. Set of fives. Oh, all in against Madison's two aces. I'm dead. Thought he was on a draw. Madison with an early misstep. He preaches patience and picking the right spots to attack. I didn't think he had a hand that big. He picked the wrong spot there. Nice hand. Thanks. I could have folded it on the flop. I didn't think he was that big. Turn card now is a 10. No help to Madison. No matter. Ace. Don't do it, baby. This could be the hand that sets Mike off. Matiso can only knock out Pizarro with a river ace. The river card is a queen, and Pizarro wins that hand and doubles up. Started out with pocket fives limping in and wins a 55,000 chip pot. Big pot for Pizarro. Big hit to Matiso. Can I take a picture of that hand? A Kodak <laughs> moment for Pizarro. That's all right. I didn't like the flop. But I didn't think he had it. Who is this tranquil man? Doesn't he realize he lost more than half his chips? Has the mouth lost his bite, or is the blow-up still to come? Here is tonight's Poker Fact, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. The odds of being dealt two aces are 220 to 1, so maybe play another hand from time to time. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, main event. Welcome back inside the Rio Poker Room, where the massive field is slowly dwindling. 
Don't worry, Doyle Brunson has not been knocked out. He doesn't even play till the next session. Somebody must owe him money. <laughs> He's actually here just to check on some of his friends. And one of those friends in a hand right now, T.J. Cloutier, moved all in, waiting on a decision from Joseph May. T.J. played in the 1959 Rose Bowl. I believe you covered it, Lon. <laughs> There's a Jack-9 on the board. Maybe May's worried that T.J. has his namesake hand again, the Jack-9. Take it, man. I just got two kings this time. If you got ace queen, I got your beat. That's all. That's I could sit down next to TJ and listen to him talk for a week and a half. <laughs> Did somebody say nice lay down? Oh, he, he made all, the more he talked, the more I like my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you played craps together with Elijah before. I, I played craps. Play. Anybody that plays craps, <laughs> I played with him. TJ is a big craps player and most certainly remembers watching this man, Archie Karras. Karras is a legendary Vegas poker player and gambler who once ran his bankroll up to $40 million in just three years. Amazingly, it took Archie only two and a half years to lose it all back. Karras specialized in playing heads-up poker for huge stakes, and right now he is heads-up against young Peter Trapley from Hungary. He is a World Series of Poker rookie. Secret age, man, secret. Archie Karras flopped a set of aces, Trapley a wheel draw. Trapley bet 3,400, and Karras calls. Just a call from Karras looking to trap the kid. Turn card now. Turn card is a four, and Trapley hits his straight. And immediately he checks, trying to trap Karras. Karras bets 7,000 with his set. Well, we see now how five deuce can crack aces. Maybe. The young Hungarian moves all in. Karras calls for 3,800 more. Sees the bad news. And Karras now would need to pair the board to knock out Trapley. River card is a queen, and Trapley will win the hand and double up. Good play, man. That was a good play. Now that's how you take a bad like beat. Like that was it. a ball. I like it. That was a good play. I'm hearing it from a guy. Oh, hello. A lot of it. Believe it. <laughs> no, I respect that. Don't play if you're sarcastic or not. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. He's not being sarcastic. Not whatsoever. If you knew who he was, you'd understand. Well, many people may not know who Karras is, but in Las Vegas, Archie is a living legend. Archie is famous for being like the number one gambler that there ever was. I remember backing Stu Younger once playing him, and Archie destroyed him. I know he beat uh, the late Chip Reese. I know he beat him out of two million dollars one day. I was the best. One man army. By myself, I got to the top. Anybody came uh, in town, uh, challenged me, I would play them. I don't care who they are, you know, and I beat them all too. And then what happens, they didn't want to play anymore, so I had to play, I had so much action in me. Then I went and started playing dice. When I used to play dice, there'd be lines of people watching me play on the dice table. So I'm betting a million a roll all the way through for three years, and I ran it up to like over 40 million. That was a lot of money. He had every $5,000 chip at the horseshoe in his box. Every one that they had. The only thing wrong with Archie was he didn't stop. That wasn't enough. So I started playing Baccarat. I lose over 20 million like in 10 days. That's half of my bankroll. And I end up uh, losing all the money. He's one of the few guys I've ever seen that has no fear of losing. I mean, money means absolutely nothing to the guy. A lot of the guys out there in the poker world, they talk about me and I catch them talking. So there's a guy lost 40 million and he's over there playing $5 chips. And I have the guts to do that. Marvelous thing about Archie, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to bother him at all. So, I mean, he just keeps going. That's the life of a gambler. I consider myself the king of the gamblers because I made it and lost it. And like Frank Sinatra says, I stood tall and uh, took the punches and uh, did it my way. <laughs> During his big winning streak, many of Karras' friends advised him to set aside five or ten million dollars and invest it. Archie told him he was a gambler and needed his money to gamble. They don't make him like Archie anymore, though Barry Greenstein says Phil Ivey is trying to catch him. Back at the feature table, Madiso still stinging from his big loss to Pizarra. That's what sucks about No Limit Hold'em is you make one mistake, you're screwed. I got cocky. See, I admit it, I know when I get cocky. I thought I got the cockiness out of my game, which I have, but I did, just for that hand, I didn't. 
Well, he's certainly doing something right this year. Mike won a bracelet, induced a seven low ball draw, and made a final table in Omaha 8. On the Milwaukee's best light pocket camp, Greg Geller looked down at pocket queens. Blinds are up to 150 and 300, and Geller limps in for 300. Mattiso, ace queen of diamonds. The old Mike liked to be aggressive, and this Mike does too. 1800. Bush folds. Action folds back to Geller. And Geller re raises to 6,000. Boy, there is something in the water today. Mattiso and Joe Hashem chasing the amateurs. Mattiso with a suited ace. Strong kicker makes the call. So he and Geller heads up. Flop is four, king six. That misses both players. Geller still with a big advantage. He checks. Mattiso is going to push. Oh, Lord. Wow. This is either a brilliant, gutsy play, picking up something on his opponent, or it's, ladies and gentlemen, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, the Mike Mattiso blowout. Geller trying to figure out how to play the new Mike. He folds, and Mattiso's bluff works. That's right, baby. Don't worry. That's balls of steel. Steel balls right there. Balls of steel. That usually catches up to him. That's right. Steel right here. Take it easy. Take it easy. It's been a long time since I threw my whole tourney on the line with nothing. <laughs> long time. The Mike Mattiso Show just got renewed. Peter, come here. You may remember this moment from last year's main event. I'm not sure about Mike Mattiso, but certainly Mr. Peanut would like to forget about it. What's going on, buddy? I think Mr. Peanut left the business after that and now lives in a honey-roasted retirement village. I admire the footwork on Mr. Peanut, though. Never got taken down by Mattiso. Anybody seen Mr. Peanut around? You got to tackle him, don't you? I think I got to at least uh, be nice to him or something. Mike figuring it's time to earn some karma points. All right, elsewhere in the Rio poker room, Joe Hashem in a hand with Russell Rosenblum over at table two. Hashem flopped a set of kings. Rosenblum an up and down straight draw. Turn card to come. Rosenblum sixth in the 2002 main event. Nine of spades and a king high straight for Rosenblum, and he bets it, 6,000. Two big hands again, and Hashem on the short end again. He's got a headache, and he hasn't even seen Rosenblum's cards. The three gives Rosenblum the check mark and misses Hashem. Rosenblum bets 6,000 again. That bet just begging for a call. This is so... This is so what? Brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. Now you know how Steve Daneman felt when you flopped a straight on him to win the 05 main event. Ah! Joe glancing over at his wife, Jeannie, standing nearby. I'm just meant to be tortured all day, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just meant to be tortured. I'm almost 90% certain that he has a 10. Russell's 100% certain. Should I call or fold? What does your gut tell you to do? Hey, one spouse per hand. Joe calls and loses. Yeah. Two tens. Jack, you were going far. You were going far. Nice hand. Yeah. Get a pair of tens. Of course, the straight has to come. Temper, temper. It's my day. It's my day, boys. What are you going to do? Nice hand, Russ. Thanks, Joe. Nice hand. Two words you often hear in poker, but they are not the most overused. Those two are the subject of this edition of The Nuts. It annoys me to no end when I hear a guy say, one time! One time, please. One time. One time. One time. One time. One time. Just one time. One time. One time, baby, please. One time is repugnant. One time, I'll tell you. Poker players have short memories as to when they got lucky. They only remember when they got unlucky. So this one time, let them be lucky. And this like fake bargain with the poker gods. You give it to me this one time and I'll never ask again. One time. One time is overused by a few of the wrong people. Well, Joe Hashem. <laughs> Give me one time. Especially after you just came off winning like the world championship of poker. <laughs> one time. One time. You know, the words are coming out of my mouth and this voice in the back of my head saying, what did you just say? Are you out of your mind, you idiot? It doesn't mean anything. It's just in the heat of the moment, in the heat of competition. One time in my life. 
How about like one more time, you lucky SLB? Never will I say one time again, because I think I've been wrong in saying that, but I will definitely be saying one more time forever. I like the expression one more time. I wouldn't be married again without it. <laughs> Meanwhile, out in the field, there's another player who probably shouldn't say one time. That's Chris Moneymaker. Moneymaker still being closely watched by his friend Donald Hobbs. Moneymaker hooked up in the hand right now with Romanian Christian Tardea. Tardea raised all in with two Red Kings. Action on Moneymaker. Moneymaker, a benefactor of one time many times over in 2003 when he won the main event. It's going to cost him almost 11000 to call. Moneymaker with ace-queen. Chris does make the call, and Tardea with a chance to double up. Oh, wow. I didn't think you'd push for something that big. All the big names playing from behind today. All right, now the flop, and there's an ace for Moneymaker to take the lead. One time. Tardea needs help on the river. He does not get it, and he has been knocked out by Chris Moneymaker. Poker champions hit flops. Romanians hit the rail. I thought I'm racing at worst. Yeah, but it still worked out for Moneymaker. That was ugly. <laughs> Don't play like that tomorrow. That's not that's not a good strategy. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, Chris tells young Hobbs. A lucky break for Moneymaker there as he hopes to win it all one more time. Next Tuesday, day one is finally over. Now the real main event journey begins. And on November 11th, the highly anticipated final table. The November 9 will compete for the most coveted prize in poker. Every Tuesday night at 8 and 9 p.m., it's the World Series of Poker on ESPN. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. Welcome back to the Rio as we look down on table two. Joe Hashem and Russell Rosenblum locking horns again. Hashem flop top pair and leads Rosenblum, who once again has a straight draw on Joe. Russell bluffed at it. Hashem called him. Turn card now is a jack, and Russell Rosenblum turned that straight again. Joe might want to take the next ferry back to Melbourne. Joe checks it. Russell Rosenblum now. How much do you have left, Joe? Ten. I'm sure Joe loved that question. Yeah. Russell bets five. You are so effing sick. You have no idea how sick you are today. You are so effing sick, man. You have no idea how bad I've run for the last two years. Uh, are you making up for it today on my, oh, yeah. on no, my you're time? Right. I am. Huh? You're right. Ash and Folded. Huh? You're making up for it on my time. All right about that. So effing sick today. Unbelievable. I still think Joe Hashem has to learn to lose a little better. Hashem has hit a rough patch, but it's been an even tougher day out in the field for Hashem's Australian compatriot, Marsha Wagoner. The pioneering female pro has been eliminated from the main event. Two top 20 finishes at the main event, but she goes out on day one here. Well, that's it for this year. Marsha is beloved here in Las Vegas. Absolutely. All right, over to another table, and we see once again T.J. Cloutier is in action. <laughs> Flop comes out. All right, let's go for it. T.J. moves all in, and he's called. Like your hand. All in on 11. You got ace high. You got two aces? Well, there was a pretty good chance he was going to call. T.J. Him. in I trouble. Can catch a queen and a jack. Yeah, and I can catch cold in the desert. T.J. looking to catch a straight and bust the pocket aces. Unbelievable. There's the jack, now the queen. T.J. needs the queen. River card is not a queen. Good luck, guys. And T.J. Cloutier has been eliminated. His streak of day one knockouts, unfortunately, continues. If I didn't have to stay with you, Lon, I'd go with T.J. right now and listen to him tell me stories. Elsewhere, Archie Karras is still in the game. The legendary gambler has just called the all-in bet from Blue Ranafelt. Ranafelt looking for help on the river. 40 million Archie had. Most people, when it got down to like 2 million, wouldn't they have stopped? Ranafelt gets no help. He's been knocked out, and Archie Karras takes that big pot. If he lost 40 million, there's no way he's going to hang on to those chips. All in is my best move, anyway. He's been there, and I, Barker, I've been doing that for 40 years. Huh? Archie, 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 you are one of a kind. All in. One of a kind. All right, from Archie Karras to another one of a kind here in the Rio Poker Room at the featured table. Let's see what the transformed Mr. Matasso is up to. 
A lot of bust outs. A lot of pros busted out already. Because they play bad. Daniel busted out yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, he picked up set against set. Mattisau's buddy, Daniel Negreanu, knocked out in an earlier session. And a new player at the table, Dave Pontier, 43 years old, from Las Vegas. He's a website designer, and he's got ace-queen. He raises to 1,000. Mattiso with ace-king, another big hand. The mouse said others have played bad, but I don't know why he would want to risk all those chips on day one on a bluff like he did. He makes the call for 1,000. Peter Bush, king-10 of spades. Bush has had the same girlfriend for six years, Lon. Clock is ticking, my friend. He calls three players to the flop. King, seven, eight. Mattiso and Bush pair their king. Mattiso with top kicker. Bush with a flush draw. Potier almost drawing dead checked. Mattiso bets 2,700. Bush now. A 23-year-old poker pro from Oakdale, New York. He's going to raise it to 7,500. Potier lays it down. How deep are you? Give me cover. Mattiso with the Kings and the top kicker. All in. He's going to move all in. Ooh, uh, good luck, all in. Bush would need to put himself at risk to call. Okay. Ooh. And he does. And Mattiso involved in another big pot. Well, this time the mouth gambles correctly. In fact, they both do. And it is a coin flip for a big pot. Bush is all in. Mattiso in for most of his chips. And now the turn card. Four is no help to Bush. That's all right. That's all right. The mouth holding on. Bush needs a 10 or any spade or he is gone. River card. Jack of clubs. That's what I'm talking about. And Mattiso takes the pot and eliminates Peter Bush. The mouth up and down and up again. Yeah! Nice, no, Mike. Back. Hey, That's Mike. right. <laughs> Mattiso stayed true to his new philosophy, and the power of positive thinking is paying off, at least on day one. Hey, Mike, just think of it. You can double me up again now. <laughs> oh, Mikey, you're playing so friggin' good. One mistake. Good job, Mikey. Enough balls to shove with nothing. You didn't play that one perfect. God bless me. <laughs> well, the new mic is still cocky. I just like when I play good. You're you like, you got, a, you got a set? <laughs> I just like when I play good. Good end. I made one mistake, and now I've recovered from it, and it feels good. Mark Safe folds. This guy's not going to knock out Phil. Steve Rector from Mesa, Arizona, on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam 6-5 of spades. He's a district manager for an electric company down there. She's not going to knock out Phil. That's because Kathleen Gleave is going to fold. This guy thinks he's going to knock out Phil, but he's not. Paul Sohn folds. Oh, this guy looks dangerous. Grady Talbot. He's a retired Air Force pilot, and he is dangerous with pocket queens in the small blind. Well, He calls for 250. You're supposed to re-raise there, sir. I call him sir because I respect him. Is this guy going to knock out Phil Helmuth? If he shakes hands with Phil, Helmuth might go down. Liddell with 8-7 of spades calls. Three players will see the flop. Talbot with his pocket queens has the lead right now. Flop is nine trade jack. Talbot's queens are still best. Liddell picked up a gut shot straight draw. Talbot checks. Yeah, it's up to you, tough guy. Liddell admits he's not the most polished poker player. Can I do bet 600? 600. Spit it out. 600 from Liddell. Rector gives up his hand. Talbot's going to raise it to 1,500. I told you that fellow was dangerous. He just check-raised yeah, Chuck Liddell. Call. And Chuck's going to call. He's not shying away from anything. I don't want to rile up Chuck Liddell, but how's he calling with a gut shot? All right, so heads up now to the turn. Turn card is a 10, and Liddell takes the lead, hitting his straight. It's a good thing Liddell didn't hit that straight against Helmuth. <laughs> Talbot, though, will lead out with a straight draw that could beat Liddell. Bet's 3,000. Yeah, that's a straight, Chuck. I'm, I'm all in. Oh, he does the right thing with a straight. Smarter than he looks. So Liddell pushes. Talbot calls for under 2,000 more. And yeah, Chuck's in the lead. Chuck looks like a little kid who got away with something. Well, you got a duck to prevent the knockout, you know? Talbot can still make a higher straight. He can knock out Liddell with an eight or a king. River card is a queen. Liddell will double up with the straight. You're still gonna win, Chuck. You win. Oh, not quite sure. Yeah, oh, I'm like, I'm off. 
You have to graduate or a king. Oh, right. Phil's going to love playing with someone who doesn't okay. even know he just doubled up. <laughs> so Liddell, as usual, made the gut shot work for him, and he's back on his feet. Norman, we often talk about the mixed bag of people and personalities found in poker, and that is evident at our featured table and throughout the room. This is shaping up to be an action-packed final day of the opening round here at the main event. What a day, Lon. A chance to watch my main man, Phil Ivey. Don't let me down. A chance to track legends Doral Brunson and Johnny Chan. A chance to watch Jerry Yang start defense of his main event title. And a chance to see if Chuck Liddell beats the you-know-what out of Phil Hellmuth. Today is a very good day. And today is a very busy day, the largest field by far of the four day one sessions. There are more than 2,400 players in action today. And there is Johnny Chan, winner of two main events. He's got 10 bracelets overall. At Chan's table is Forrest Griffin, another UFC fighter who won a title fight last night here in Vegas. Two champions here, but this is Johnny Chan's cage. Forrest Griffin continues his win streak, picks up a pot there with a set of sevens. Forrest Griffin won the fight last night. What's the other guy look like? <laughs> How long you been playing poker? About an hour. About an hour. <laughs> it's the same with fighting, you know? If you're fighting somebody that really doesn't know what's going on, they kind of don't do anything right. So you don't really know what to do. <laughs> guy that doesn't know how to play poker is kind of like... He definitely played the sevens well. Yeah, despite getting knocked around last night, Griffin's still thinking straight. Doyle Brunson's also playing today, another two-time main event champion, owner of 10 bracelets. Like Johnny Chan, Texas Dolly won his main event bracelets back-to-back. -back. And last year's champion, Jerry Yang, of course, is playing today, hoping to become the fifth man to go back-to-back. -back. Yang beat a field of yes. 6,358 last year. This year's field, 6,844. And Jerry's off to a good start as he knocks off an opponent. You the man. You the man. Thank you. You the man. Thank you. All right, let's check on the action at table two where Phil Ivey, your guy, is looking to cash in the main event for the first time since 05. Ivey's been quiet at the main event the last couple of years. It's time for him to make some noise. After the flop, Ivey with an up and down straight draw. David Clark with a gut shot straight draw. Tony Vu, though, leads with pocket kings. A king on the turn. That makes a set for Vu. Clark with a pair of kings and a nut flush draw. Clark checks to Ivey now with his straight draw. Ivey is going to try to buy it with 6,000. You know, there's a possible flush and a possible straight on that board now. Ivy has neither. He has what we call a 7% hand. Vu hit trip kings and seems worried. It'll cost him 6000 to call Ivy's bet. And he calls with his set. Clark also calls. Clark with the pair of kings. And, of course, as you said, he's drawing to the nut flush and the nut straight. It's an ace on the river. Vu with a set of kings <laughs> earns the check mark. Clark now with aces up. That ace is another scare card. Anyone with a queen would have the nut straight. Nobody has the queen. Clark checks it cautiously. Ivy now can either bluff at this again or give up on it. I would prefer that he give up on it. No, Phil. No. Sorry. 12,000 from Ivy. 12,000 with squad douche. And he's got the World Series rookie talking to himself. Vu's got the best hand. You know what helps Ivy? At this moment is that Vu also has to worry about Clark behind him. But this this, this bluff isn't going to hold. Wow. Vu's going to give up his three kings. Vu coughs up the best hand. Not happy about it. Yeah, Vu will be even more disgusted if Clark calls Ivy and he sees their hands. So the check mark transfers to Clark with aces up. Well, Ivy trying to swaggle foost this table. What a scoundrel. <laughs> That's your guy. My man. <laughs> and Clark folds. This is why I'm with Phil Ivy. The bluff works for Phil Ivy. Wherever Phil Ivy goes, I will follow. He is the man. Vu bluffed into oblivion. Still not convinced he did the right thing, but for Phil Ivy, it's good to be Phil Ivy. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. The 2008 World Series of Poker. Presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. 
Welcome back inside the Rio, where the room is a buzz with more than $9 million going to the winner. But one person who is notably quieter than usual, Havad Khan. He finished sixth in last year's main event, but first in self-congratulations. We never got used to hearing Havad scream, but at least we knew where he was in the room. And so far this year, he seems to be a little toned down. Indeed, it appears as if someone sedated him. Remember what they did to Jack Nicholson and one flew over the cuckoo's nest? As for the man who outlasted Havad and everyone else last year, Jerry Yang hooked up in a hand right now, but his stack looking a little short. And now he's been put to the ultimate decision. Kidding me. What? Oh boy, this is a very, very tough lay down. God, I can't believe I'm laying this hand down. I can't believe it. Jerry doesn't look as tough without 40 or 50 million chips in front of him. Yang folds and loses a big pot. Uh, we still have a shot. We still have a chance to come back. <laughs> no need to be risky. So things not breaking Jerry's way so far today. A stark contrast to the dominating performance in 2007 we saw from the social worker turned main event champion. Actually, I'm still shocked. Yeah! Yeah! You know, sometimes I would look at my bracelet and I said, wow. This is really real. It's a Jerry Yang tidal wave. You just gotta seek shelter. I have been studying my opponents very, very closely and like a hawk. I noticed that they were playing a little tight. Four million. Wow. Jerry is a betting machine. And say, you know what? I am going to be the aggressor. Raise. I'm all in. And Yang comes over the top. Wow. You know, I think I succeeded and I was able to pick up some, some good hands actually. The river card. It's a six! Yeah! Jerry Yang is the 2007 world champion! When I saw the six on the river, the first person that I, I saw was my brother-in-law, and I jumped in. That particular hug was for me. An American dream come true for Jerry Yang. Yes! The hug that I gave to my wife was really a hug for her, actually. You know, I just um, wanted to let her know that, hey, you know what? We made it. We made it. Yang says he'll play differently at the 08 main event than what we saw at the 07 final table. Then again, he's got a lot of people looking over his shoulder this year. What a nice man. Jerry Yang trying to go back to back with main event championships. Let's take a look on the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker and see the elite group of men who have won two main events in a row. Johnny Moss, Doyle Brunson, Stu Unger, and Johnny Chan. 20 years ago, Chan beat Fields of 152 and 167. And the man who denied Johnny's three in a row and beat him heads up, Phil Helmuth, still absent from this year's tournament for the moment. I'm trying to hang around until Phil shows up. And just do what Phil does, fold every hand for hours on end. All right, action continues with Gil George from Dallas, makes his living in commercial real estate. Ace Jack, he raises to 225. Liddell now, six deuce. Well, if you play six deuce, you might not make it till Phil gets here. Daniel Del Biagio from Ferndale owns a dairy there in California, Pocket Jacks. Well, it's always been a dream of mine to own a dairy. Mark Safe with Ace, Ace. King. This pro won two bracelets in 2005. Gonna make a 900 to play. George folds. George did the I'll smart thing. Liddell's yeah. gonna call with six deuce. Liddell does not do the smart thing. Del Biagio with his jacks. Oh, the dairy guy's gotta play. Makes the call. So three players to the flop. Flop is ace six ten, safe with top pair. Liddell paired his six. He's first to act. Check, check. check. The pro's not going to check. 2,000. Safe bets, two-thirds the size of the pot. You know, I think Chuck's waiting for a bell to ring every time before he acts. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to call for 2,000. A pair of sixes. And with Jax, Del Biagio will stick around. Everybody with a pair, safe in command. Turn card now. Is a deuce, and Liddell hits two pair. And takes the lead. You know, so far, anytime Chuck checks his cards again, he's improved his hand. Ah, a tell on Liddell. He checks, Del Biagio checks. Safe now. Pair of aces, which are no good right now, but he bets 3,200. Yeah, but he's got to believe his aces are good. Liddell calls. Del Biagio folds his two jacks. Heads up now. Got anything, Chuck? He's got 6-2, and there's a 6-2 on the board, and right. Chuck knows that adds up to 16. <laughs> All right, now the river card. 
Liddell way ahead. A seven. Liddell now earns the check mark with two pair. Oh, all in, I guess. All in. Safe will need about 5,000 to call. He's, he said he's all in? Yeah. He said he's all in, I guess. <laughs> I got something. You got something? I don't know. I don't know what. You might have something better, but. Do you want to know what I have? Oh, I think I got the pot too big here. I think I'll probably have to call you, Chuck. It's fine with me. If you beat two pair, you're all right. Really? Really. Would Chuck lie? No. Really have two pair? Uh, yeah. Damn it, I believe you too. This is inappropriate talk, but what the heck? You wouldn't lie to me, right? I wouldn't lie to you. Ugh. You know you'd kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing is we we can't discuss our hands, guys. The tournament official gently warning Liddell to zip it up. What? You're like, he asked, right? What? He asked, right? Uh, yeah, but you're not allowed to tell others what you have. Look, Mark, that's an honest face. All right, all right. I call Chuck. Call. Mark calls. He's got two pair. He told him he had two pair. I said, you win. Liddell torments Mark Safe right here. I won't lie to you, man. A tough hand for Mark Safe. Wasn't quite sure how to handle the light heavyweight champion, but a nice, honest double up for Chuck Liddell, and it looks like Phil Helmuth will have his hands full whenever he gets here. I'm Chuck Liddell. I'm the Iceman in a fight for uh, the UFC. Former light heavyweight champion. Yeah, I'm pretty low key. In. But I hit hard. And it looks like it's going to get a little hotter in here for the Iceman because Phil Helmuth has arrived in uniform, no less. Somebody pinch me and I hope I wake up. I think we should salute him. Sir. You don't have to cheer for me, cheer for the girls. Come on. Yeah. The Iceman. What's up, big man? How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing all right. You're a bad man. At least he's sane. And by the way, I'm thinking about going to Afghanistan uh, in December. Really? To visit the troops, yeah. Because I've never been in the military, I feel like I owe them something, you know? We all owe them something. Yeah, I feel like I, feel like I owe them something. And if I can make one trip over there, you know, and, and host some poker tournaments for them and give them some DVDs and books. Just one trip, I feel like I'm, I can make it even for life, you know? They would love that. Because the troops need to be supported. How many in a war zone? That'll bring the troops home. Phil, of course, won the main event back in 1989 with less than 200 entrants at that time. Now there are hundreds here just to watch the main event, and two of those fans are Phil Ivey's biggest supporters, Mel and Pat Humphreys, who've been following him for years with their homemade Ivey T-shirts all the way from Atlantic City. They're nice people, but frankly, I think they just want money from Phil, and he's not going to give them a dime. They have known Ivey since he played under the pseudonym Jerome in Atlantic City years ago. All right, elsewhere on the rail is Chris Moneymaker, the 2003 main event winner. Chris made it through his day one session, but he's back today to cheer on Donald Hobbs, who's making his first World Series appearance. He was injured in a devastating car accident. As a matter of fact, poker played a role in Donald's remarkable recovery with an assist from Moneymaker himself. I broke my legs, my pelvis, my collarbone, my left arm. I got burnt from... My right titty nipple down to my kneecap. That's crazy. My job as an occupational therapist is to help people regain function and independence. I was asking him about the things that he enjoyed doing, and he was um, telling me that he liked to play cards. So I asked him who his favorite poker player is, and he said Chris Moneymaker, and his face lit up, and he got all excited. I'd watched him on, on TV for a long time, and you know, I watched him out of year he won in 03. So the word got back to Chris, and he was like, really? He was like, well, I'll go see him. So he did. When I came to the hospital, and he saw me stand there, and he just went, oh my god. You know, and you, the big old smile on his face. 
I was blown away. I was like, God, I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. It was and we played poker for straws, which he ended up uh, killing me. Yeah. I still got my straws at the house. I promised when I was in the hospital with him that I would fly him out to the World Series so he could come watch me play. And uh, in February, when I found out he was getting better, I decided, well, instead of flying him out here and letting him sit behind me and watch me play, I decided, well, I'm going to put him in the main event. Words can't explain it. This is just, this just bloated out of water. I mean, it's a, it's a dream come true. Donald says that he knows he has beaten the odds just by being here at the main event, but that's not going to stop him from playing to win. All right, let's get back over to our feature table and see how Phil Helmuth has uh, settled in next to Chuck Liddell. Chuck's got some game, Phil. Be careful here. Well, I'm just having fun playing with guys I watch on TV, that's all. Absolutely. I'm sorry, is he going to be in the Colonel Clink outfit all day? Well, I think he's going for the patent esque look, and I think he's got it. Mark safe now with ace jack mm -hmm. offsuit. Safe one, two. Hold them bracelets in a one week span in 05. Limps in for 200. Gil George now. A couple of deuces. And George makes the call. Liddell now mixing it up today. Chuck loves action. Jack eight. <coughs> and Chuck's back in the ring. Is there an adjustment I can make to my TV set? The 11-star general folds. That's one for each bracelet, by the way. Over to Del Biagio. 9-5 from the big blind. He checks his options. Four players in for the minimum. Oh, Omar Bradley is calling. Probably wants his riding crop back. Flop is 10, deuce, 9. That's a set of deuces for George. Del Biagio with a pair of nines, checks, safe, bets 200 with ace high. Safe with nothing makes a next to nothing bet. George with a set of deuces, makes the call. Liddell's got a straight draw. Make it 500. And raises to 500. Del Biagio folds. Safe, a glutton for punishment calls. Really? I guess he figures he can outplay Chuck to the finish line. He hates to be a spectator. George is going to re-raise all in. Well, Chuck's not the one that Safe has to you worry about. 500, right? Liddell okay. next to act. You made it 500? Is that right? Okay. I'm out. I fold. Safe folds out of turn. He's first, though. He's first. Oh! Sorry. Who's the pro? Who's the amateur here? I don't want to pick a fight with him, but how can Liddell be thinking about calling here? Liddell now would need to go all in to call this. I hate to do this if I, if I heard you. I'd... You know what? I'll, I'll just go all in. He calls all in. And he's behind on the cards. Yeah, Chuck goes all in on a draw, and he's in big trouble. He's 6'2", 205. He's about to go down at the hands of a 62-year-old commercial real estate fellow. <laughs> all right, turn card now is a four. No help to Liddell. Liddell looking for a straight. He needs a seven or a queen, or he is knocked out of the main event. River card is a king, and that's going to do it. Gil that's George wins the hand. Liddell, guys. TKO over Chuck Liddell. Good playing with you, bud. Good playing with you. Good luck in your fight, bud. Good job, man. I'll have to come by one of your fights soon. Yeah, Chuck will leave your ringside right, cool. seat in Afghanistan. So the light heavyweight is out. Ladies and gentlemen, of the best fighters in the world. And the heavyweight is just getting started. Tonight's Poker Fact brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. There are nearly 20,000 possible flop combinations in Texas Hold'em. Memorize them and get back to us. We're back inside the Rio, but a top pro is on his way out. Good luck, guys. Take care, Grady. Mark Safe, two-time bracelet winner, the latest to be eliminated. If he's lucky, he can catch Chuck Liddell in the parking lot, play some liars poker. It's all about survival on day one here, and no one knows the meaning of that word better than Jean Robert Balland, who appeared on Survivor China last year. At his table is another ice man, Teddy Monroe, who's watching Jean Robert in a hand right now. Is that a string bet? Because his 500 was on his cards. I think it's an all-in before I let go, Mike. I think it's a string bet. It's an all-in before I let go. I'm just playing. Bro. I, I re-raise you all in. So Balan trying to vote somebody off the island here. And the tribe has spoken. The main event field is one man shorter. Good tournament. A little bit unlucky. With the All right, game. brother. I knew I didn't like it. I swear I love you, baby. Don't worry about it. Good luck. All right, baby. It's, 
<laughs> he had 500 left. That's so wrong. Milan That's finished eighth on Survivor, but here at the main event, the 6,000-member Tribal Council is much tougher to get by. Also in the field today, actress turned poker pro Jen Tilly, the former Oscar nominee for Bullets Over Broadway, has won the ladies event here in 2005. Gives her one more World Series title than her boyfriend, Phil Locke. Yeah, that's Phil Locke. That's Phil Locke? That's Phil Locke. Not quite himself today, though. For some reason, Phil has decided to show up in makeup. Geez, he looks like Hume Cronin in Cocoon. Is that really him under there? It's really him with pocket aces. Nice yeah. jacket. There's no prop bet we know of. He just decided to come dressed as an old man. Nice jacket. And someone else who was not quite himself today is Havad Khan, the online legend who was recognized last year as much for his celebrations as he was for his poker skills. I tell you, we're talking frontal lobotomy here. Just look. Look at him. The wild celebrations are nowhere to be found. Rain Khan does seem eerily quiet one year later, even as he picks up a pot right there, but he does indeed have a good reason for this new reined in approach at the main event. Section four, rule 36. Excessive celebration. Ah! Ah! Through extended theatrics. Ah! Ah! I play this game to win. Or physical actions gestures or conduct <laughs> may be subject to penalty. Section 4, Rule 36, also known as the Havad Khan Rule. <laughs> sure, I get some pride out of it. Hell yeah, I get pride out of it. It's awesome. I love watching it. I was like, man, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> I was out of my mind when I did what I did. To be honest, I think it was just all the pent up, you know, anger and frustration I had is like scrying and never going out. And I finally got to, you know, have my moment. <laughs> I really don't care what the critics think. I hate the bubble! For what it's worth, you know, they can say what they want about me. I don't care. What happened, happened. I left my bill at the strip club. Pull up my pants. I'm back. There's no way I could ever replicate that. I got all of it out of me. You know, that's it. Now I can play the game. I can appreciate the game for what it is as opposed to just getting out there and showing everybody my face. I think the rule was a good idea, and I'm glad they did it for the sake of everybody. And so the quieter, gentler Havad Khan plays on. But let's now see if they can come up with the Phil Helmuth rule, huh, on. Actually, there should be several Phil Helmuth rules. Back at the feature table, a few changes to note. Chris Moneymaker's number one fan, Donald Hobbs, has settled into Chuck Liddell's former seat. And as Moneymaker looks on from the stands, we should note Phil has changed into his more familiar uniform than the one he was wearing when he arrived. All right, action continues at this featured table. In the yellow is Jerry Cusick from Denver at his first main event with a fold. Kathleen Gleva is an attorney from Newark, Ohio, with Pocket Force. She's a family law attorney, Lana. I think I know her. She calls for 300. Gil George with Ace Deuce of Clubs. He cashed once already in this year's World Series. He limps in. Donald Hobbs, King Seven, into the muck. On to Phil Helmuth. Despite his two final tables this year, he's a little disappointed with his World Series performance. 6 5 offsuit. All right, I'm going to raise it up. Raise it up. 1,400 more. Makes it 1,700 total. Fill in the big blind, mixing it up early. Gleva folds. George decides to make the call. Heads up with Phil Helmuth. Flop is ace, tray five. George with a pair of aces and a wheel draw. Helmuth picked up a pair of fives. Phil's first main event was in 1988. He was knocked out by Johnny Chan in 33rd place. The following year, he beat Chan heads up for the title. Helmuth bets 1,700. George... Makes the call. Phil at least looking the way he's supposed to look now. Eight on the turn is no help to Helmuth, who's way behind. Yeah, Phil has fallen further behind each step of the way. He checks. George checks behind him. Now the river card, and that free card pays off for Helmuth. Two pair and the check mark. And oh, he looks at his cards again when he improves, just like Chuck Liddell. <laughs> 3,800. 3,800 to call for George. Left with a pair of aces, which aren't a winner. But he pays off, Phil. Fives and sixes. Well, sixes and fives. And that's good enough. That wins. Boy, if the shoe were on the other foot in this hand, Lon, we would get a speech. So Phil Helmuth takes advantage of that free card and takes the pot. Now we're playing the game. Pretty lucky. 
Well, if luck weren't involved. Oh, I deserve a break or two, don't worry. Uh, that was a professional move, not an advanced amateur, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't make my moves with Ace-8. That's the amateurs. The pros make their moves with the 7-8 suiteds and 5-6s. Ace-8 you get yourself in a lot of trouble with. Well, we still got a speech. All right, let's go over to table two. And your guy, Phil Ivey, last time we saw him, he was flexing his muscle with a bluff. He's in another hand right now. After the flop, Columba Duffy has tripped Jacks. David Clark jacks up. Ivy with a nut flush draw. Ivy, the youngest ever to win five bracelets, but he's never won one in a Hold'em event. Duffy bet 28-25. Clark folded. Ivy reaching and makes the call. So Ivy with his draw will go heads up against Duffy, a San Francisco contractor with the big lead there. Turn card now is an eight of spades, and what a card. Duffy hits his full house. Ivy hits the nut flush. What a disaster card for Team Ivy. I'm on Team Ivy, Lon. This is going to cripple us. Wow. Duffy will bet it, of course, 2375. Now to Ivy. The nut flush. What do you do when you're a big pro with a nut flush, Norman? Well, it's not going anywhere. You smooth call or you raise? Yeah, it is a raise. 9,000. 9,000 total would make it 66.25 to Duffy to call, and he does. And Duffy, just with that smooth call, you, you got to like that play from the contractor. Ivy checking out Duffy's stack, wondering if he could take the rest of it here. Duffy earns the check mark. Of course, he's got the full house, and he checks it. We saw Daniel Negrano go out set against set in an earlier day one session. Here, Ivy with a nut flush against a full house, staring at disaster. Ivy bets enough to put Duffy all in. What's Duffy waiting for? Not much. Here he goes. And there is the full house. Yeah, we're at the nuts. Huh? At the nuts. Yeah, I know. Huh? I know. Why are you standing up for? Why, why shouldn't it be? I mean, there's something wrong with standing why, up. Why are you standing up when you got the nuts, like you're like you getting ready to leave? If you're the kings, I don't know. If you're pocket kings, you have me. OK. It wasn't the nuts. OK. Feeling okay. a cranky mood? I don't like that. Whoa. Never mind, we just look at things differently. A clearly frustrated Phil Ivey. The nut flush was not good enough, and Duffy takes most of his chips. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Well, if we're in the Rio poker room, and it is the main event, and Jerry Yang is kissing a photograph of his family, well, you know what that means. All in. Hey, gentlemen, the champ is all in. Oh, he does announcing, too, now. Jerry trying to be the first one to go back to back in the main event since Johnny Chan. And a call. Turn him up, gentlemen. Yes. Jerry's got it. Dream survives. Oh, it's not over yet. Moreau with a straight flush draw. The champ speaks too soon. Now the river card. Okay. Jerry takes the hand. You'll stick around a little while longer, at least. Remember, guys, when I kiss my family's picture, I mean business. It worked well for Jerry in 2007. There is the World Championship bracelet, but that's not all our winner gets this year. On the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker, you see they get $9.1 million. Jerry Yang won the second largest main event prize in history last year. The main event was winner take all until 1977. 34 entrants that year, and Doyle Brunson won 340,000. This year's world champion will emerge from a field of 6,844. Phil Helmuth now with ace queen off suit. Limps in for 300. Action over to Grady Talbot. Grady looks down at pocket trays from the small blind, and he limps in 150. It cost him. 24-year-old Donald Hobbs, who is the same age Phil Helmuth was when he set the record for youngest main event winner. In a big blind. He'll check his option with 10-4. Three players see the flop. It is ace 4-10. Hobbs hits two pair. Phil Helmuth hit a pair of aces. Talbot, no improvement to his trays. First to act. He checks it. Hobbs checks his two pair. You know, Helmuth raises pre-flop. Hobbs ain't around to flop two pair. You got to mix up your play. It just backfired there on Phil. Phil bets a thousand. Talbot folds. Hobbs makes the call. Heads up to the turn now. It is another ten and a full boat for Young Hobbs. 
Phil Hamuth now with aces up and drawing all but dead. Hobbs with a small bet of 700. That's a tiny bet. That's 700 into a pot of over 3,000. All right, I call. It's nothing for Phil to call with his aces up. And he does. The river card now is a nine, and Hobbs earns the check mark. No improvement to Helmuth. Hobbs first to act. It's a thousand. Call. And a quick call from Phil. And another tiny call. bet, just inexperienced from Hobbs. I don't think that was a value bet. Phil shows aces you have up. To you have to hand over, man. The inexperienced you Hobbs finally shows his cards. Three, ten, ten is full of four. I got a boat. Four hours around that. Countdown to Helmuth liftoff. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, maybe a kinder, uh, gentler Phil. Hobbs will take the pot. What's going on here? Good hand, man. You know, Phil's got something on his mind. Spill it, Phil. Come on, man. I limped in for 300 thinking someone's going to go for the money. What the heck is going on here? I thought he played better with the riding crop. <laughs> so Hobbs with that full house takes a few chips off the former world champ. And as Phil continues to be Phil, let's go to the other Phil. Phil Ivy at table two running low on chips and trying to get some back right now. After the flop, Ivy has a gut shot straight draw. Andrew Weber, no, not that one, ace king high. And Columba Duffy, ace jack high. Weber checked action on Duffy. My guy not in a good mood. Duffy bets a thousand. That would put Ivy all in, and there he goes. He's got to go all in on a gut shot. Phil has three top 25 finishes this decade in the main event, but he's staring at an early exit. Oh, I'm glad you're a bit tired, pal. You'll have plenty of time to rest after this hand. Weber made the call. I keep picking Phil Ivy to win the main event. He keeps paying me back by yawning. Ivy all in. Weber and Duffy with a small side pot. A four on the turn, no help to Ivy, but Duffy with a nut flush draw. And Ivy will need a queen or a jack, or our day is done. River card is at 10, and that's going to be it. Phil Ivy eliminated. Weber will win both pots, but Phil will take his leave. He was crushed earlier holding the nut flush and goes out here as Weber collects his winnings. Yeah, go back to the big game and make half a million. Thanks for coming, Jerome. The main event just got a little less dangerous for the remaining players. Next Tuesday, day one is finally over. Now the real main event journey begins. And on November 11th, the highly anticipated final table. The November 9 will compete for the most coveted prize in poker. Every Tuesday night at 8 and 9 p.m., it's the World Series of Poker on ESPN. Back inside the Rio, we lost one Iceman, Chuck Liddell, but the other one, Teddy Monroe, still alive in the main event. The Iceman at the table. Yeah, the number one player, baby. baby. What does that mean, Iceman? It means that, means that like you wear cool? eyes. Does that mean you're cool? That's one. It means you wear a lot of eyes. you got a lot of jewelry. That's two. There's more? Huh? And what else? It's number three, too. It means you can't be shook? No. no. What's number three? Oh, I'll freeze you, baby, when I show you my hand. <laughs> Speaking of frozen, I'm not sure whether or not Phil Locke can move his facial muscles under that disguise. That is a lot of makeup, but it's not preventing him from collecting some pots. Actually, he could be Judd Hirsch in the Judd Hirsch story. <laughs> Locke's better half, Jennifer Tilly, has one of the most recognizable faces in the room, but there's no smile on it right now. Her all-in has just been called. And her cards come up second best, and she's knocked out. I'm sure she wants to go tell Phil she's just been knocked out, but I don't think she can find him unless she's looking for Donna Michi. So the main event field continues to get smaller and smaller. Let's get back to the featured table and check on our main man, Phil Helmuth. Phil, listen to ABBA. All right, action at this feature table continues with Kathleen Gleva. The attorney looks down at Ace King offsuit. By the way, what am I going to do with Phil Ivey? He's the best player, and he's won one bracelet in the last six World Series. He's making both of us look bad. Yeah. He was your pick, right? Yes, he was my pick. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Jack, 10 of diamonds for Gil George. He calls the 900 chip raise that Gleva made. I should just pick Gil George to win the main event. Who do you got? I have Kirill Gerasimov, the Russian. Watch good, out. Good luck. Hobbs folded. Helmuth with pocket queens. Raise it up. 23. He makes it 3,200 total. It'd be 2,300 more to Gleva. Actually, Helmuth, despite all of our differences, is my second favorite, Phil. Gleva called, and George will call. So three players. Phil leads the way with his pocket queens. 
Try to get Kathleen and Gill's chips here. Now the flop. 7-9-4. Helmuth's queens are still good, but Gill picked up flush and straight draws. Gleva missed it. Phil is going to bet 4,500. Helmuth has changed his style of late. I think he's better the tournament. He's aggressive and mixing it up early in tournaments more than he used to. And his big bet forces a fold from Gleva. Action on Gil George now. Straight and flush draws. Come on, raise it. And he's going to move all in. 25,500. Wowie. The old Phil would lay this down in a heartbeat early on in a tournament before he would risk most of his chips. Why do I think you have the ace jack of diamonds over there, buddy? Pretty good read. And he calls. Phil ahead with his queens against the draws of Gil George. No, I have queens. I have queens. He called 2,300 more with Jack-10. And if Jack-10 beats him, I fear for Gil George. <laughs> no kidding. And the whole Rio poker room. And ace is no help to George on the turn. Halbuth holding on, a 3-1 to one favorite. George needs an 8 for a straight or a diamond to stay alive. River card is a 4. Yes! Yes! Helmuth wins that big yes! pot. Yes! And Gil George has been eliminated. Didn't you pick him? Oh, geez, that wasn't official. Phil was put to the test with George's big bet. Phil rightly trusted his gut, and that is the planter's good instinct moment. I can win a coin flip too, baby. My other Phil is happy. You're on the Helmuth bandwagon now? I went with my read. What do you want me to do? Act like a socially adjusted normal adult. That deserves a celebration. Come on now. All right, all right. A fill with chips is a dangerous fill. The Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. The 2008 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company. And in part by the World Series of Poker. Shouldn't you be playing for a bracelet next year? Pre-register at WorldSeriesOfPoker.com. As the main event field continues to shrink inside the Rio, one of the game's greats is on his way out. Good luck, guys. Doyle Brunson, winner of 10 bracelets and two main events, has been eliminated. He is still the standard at age 74, both in quality of play and quality of character. Doyle's last main event cash came in 2004. And I hope Jerry Yang brought the Dramamine today. He has been up and down and back again in the hand right now with Las Vegas pro Michael Carroll, who's got four previous World Series caches. Carroll moved all in on Jerry. And Jerry makes the call and loses the hand. So Carroll doubles up through the defending champion. Jerry takes a hit there, and he'll try to keep grinding it out. And as Jerry Yang knows, what a grind this main event is. Nearly 7,000 began. And if you survive to day two, you still have nearly 4,000 players left to beat. Two new players at our featured table. Jim Ruffalo from Bakersfield, California. Owns a couple of McDonald's franchises there. And Kenneth Terrell from Atlanta, Georgia. An attorney turned poker pro. Action on the 89 main event champion Phil Helmuth on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam. Phil has five tray of clubs. Phil will limp in for 400. Now Ruffalo. Five tray of diamonds. They both have five tray long. Suited. But not the same suit. Action over to Kenneth Terrell. Terrell, ace jack. Terrell made a final table here at the World Series this year. He'll call from the small blind for 200. And Donald Hobbs. Pocket queens in the big blind. Oh, yeah. And oh, he's yeah. going to move all in his last 3,800. Helmuth folds his five tray. You know, Phil's calling card is patience. He will wait for another spot. Ruffalo's five tray oh, goes into the muck. Call. And a call, call from Phil. Terrell. And that will put Hobbs at risk. But Hobbs ahead with his pocket queens against the ace jack of Terrell. Hobbs tournament on the line here against the former attorney from Atlanta. Good luck, kid. You're back in it if you win. In for well, let's see the vlog. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> You're back in it if you win this, Bob. All right, Hobbs at risk. Here's the flop. 9-9-10. Nine, nine, Hobbs still good with the Queens. 
Hobbs in great shape. Chris Moneymaker paid his entry into the main event. Moneymaker survived his day one. Hobbs trying to do the same. Turn card on oh, the ace, and that's the one card Hobbs did not want to see. And that will all but end Donald Hobbs' day. He will need a River Queen or his main event is over. River card is a four, and that's it. Hobbs has been eliminated. I had to call it. I appreciate you, man. I've been trying to do all day. Very good. Hobbs lived his dream today playing in the main event. We wish him luck. So at the end of the fourth and final day one session, some of the biggest names in the game have departed, but many are still in the hunt. My eyes on the prize, nine million. That's the goal, and uh, anything less than that will be a disappointment. Including the newly mild-mannered Havad Khan, the costumed Phil Locks, the surging Phil Hellmuth, yes! and the defending champ, Jerry Yang. Survive. 3,629 survived and move on to day two. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. So long from the main event.